from BC High School, and Stacy knows what matters most to you and your family and can help you with all your insurance needs. Home, life, and auto. Stacy Sizemore's Farm Bureau Agency is located at 7501 Irmo Drive in Columbia, and to get a quote or to find out more, you can visit scfbins.com or call Stacy at 803-749-9171. That's 803-749-9171. That's Stacy Sizemore with Farm Bureau Insurance. Be sure to check out bestmetronews.com. It's your ultra local news source. To find out what's going on in Casey, West Columbia, and Springdale, along with the absolute best coverage of Lexington Two Schools, be sure to check out westmetronews.com, your ultra local news source. You can also follow us on social media at Facebook and Twitter. For all of your latest local breaking news, visit westmetronews.com. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit SimplySouthernRealtySC.com. And welcome back to BC High School. Mike Higgins, Kirk Pichy here with you. And had a little uh, rain out last night. Of course, anybody that's been around this field for a long time knows. And again, uh, Lee Thomas and uh, Chris Gibbs do an amazing job. But out in center field, when we get any kind of rain, especially the rain we had the last several weeks, uh, last several days, like Coach Sharpie says, it's a bass pond out in center field. They have to work double duty yeah. to get that field pumped, but it looks great tonight. <laughs> Again, Coach Sharpie had, had told me earlier today when we were talking that there's going to be some soft spots out there, but they just didn't feel like it was safe enough to play there yesterday, Kurt. Yeah, you don't want to take any chances, this is a, especially being a region game. I mean, you, you want everybody at their best, and you want the field at the best, and uh like I said, that's a good decision. It, don't, it doesn't change a whole lot. It just gives the kids an extra day to get prepared and anybody, like I said, dinged up or anything like that, another day's rest on the arm. So it's all plus. Well, uh, let's look at some uh, players you need to keep an eye on tonight. We'll start with Dreer. Pitcher tonight, Nolan Cook. Last season he had five wins on the year. Uh, one of the aces for them last year. His last outing against OW Friday pitched three innings, gave up no hits, no runs. 41 pitches total, Kurt, 28 strikes, had eight strikeouts, no walks, dominated. And out in the field and at the plate, a couple of guys you need to keep an eye on. Of course, uh, Jack Painter out in the field, a shortstop, also a terrific hitter. But Micah Elliott, the other night, he went three for three with two RBIs against OW. Scored three runs, also had a triple. And Caleb Gibson, one for two in that game, two RBIs in one run. Had a double, and for the Bearcats, on the mound tonight pitching for us, our ace, Hayden Thomas. Uh, again, we haven't seen him in the early part of regular season play uh, against a team of Dreer's caliber, but in his competition so far, he dominated. Last two outings, he's combined for 20 strikeouts and two walks. Those are some pretty impressive numbers, partner. Yeah, they sure are, but the competition's stepping up tonight, so uh, as long as he's on, he's throwing strikes. You got defense, a good defense behind you, so... Uh, like I said, we'll see if he's throwing strikes, we'll be in good shape. But uh, I watched her, their uh, pitcher warm up over the mic. He's a southpaw, too, throw pretty hard. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a step up competition, not only for our pitching staff, but for our batters to see some pitching that they haven't really seen, you know, probably since the preseason tournaments that you talked about. That's a good point. And talking with the coaches and the players, I think for BC, their strategy tonight. They're going to put everything in. They're going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at Drew tonight. This win and this moment is that big for BC because you feel like if you can win this game tonight, that puts you in the driver's seat and then just take your chances on Friday. But you got to win night tonight first, Kurt. Yeah, because like I said, you still got to, you know you still got you know four more games after these two right here to um, you know to round out the the region play and you've already got your two easy series out of the way you still got Gilbert to go and we still got Swansea to go yeah. so we got a little tougher road to hold so yeah winning these two games at least this one right here tonight um is important absolutely and for them they've got Lower Richland left two easy wins for them so uh if they want to win a championship it's going to come through BC tonight and but if they win the series it's a lot for them I would believe oh yeah like I said if they got Lower Richland left and is that the last one they got? Laura That's Richard? it, because yeah, they, they started start, a week early. Yep. So, yeah, it, I mean, if they win, you know, if, if they if we split, and then, you know, we that forces us to have to basically win the last four games. So, uh, 
You know, it's all about winning the night. You got to win the night. You don't win the night, you put yourself behind the eight ball quick. Absolutely. We'll stick around. We'll take another time out. And coming up just a couple of minutes, we'll have Kurt's keys to the game. And, again, thanks so much for joining us today here on the Dove 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network on YouTube. If you're looking for an auto repair shop that you can trust, you found us here at Lorix Auto Repair. We know how important it is to find a car service you can rely on, so your satisfaction is our top priority each and every day. You will feel the difference that exceptional customer care makes when you work with Lorix Auto Repair. We know our team sets us apart, saving you time and money, not to mention worry. Be sure to stop in and see us weekdays from 8 to 530 at 4804 Augusta Road in Lexington, or visit us online at lorixauto.com. Sandy Run Exterminating is a family-owned and operated company serving Columbia, Lexington, Gaston, Newberry, Orangeburg, Aiken, Lugoff, Camden, and anywhere in between. Being a family-owned company, they go the extra mile to give you the best service around. Call them today at 803-794-3208 to schedule your free termite inspection. Sandy Run Exterminating can help solve all your pest control problems, termite inspections, treatments and treatment contracts, damage repair, pest control, new construction pre-treatments, CL100 letters, and moisture control. Give them a call at 803-794-3208. The On Deck Pregame Show, presented by Burkett, Burkett and Burkett CPAs, continues on the Dove 1620. Burkett, Burkett and Burkett CPAs is proud to honor the memory of Horace Burkett, captain of the BC football team in 1947, and his homecoming queen, Catherine Burkett. We are grateful to our dad and mom for their many years of devotion and service to the Casey West Columbia communities, and we try every day to walk in their footsteps. If we can help you or your family with any accounting or financial needs, we will be happy to assist you. Visit our website at BurkettCPAs.com. Thanks for your support, and go Bearcats! At Simply Southern Realty, we know that buying a home or selling a home is one of the biggest and most exciting decisions a person can make. We aim to make the process as simple as possible. Our team of local experts here at Simply Southern Realty is ready to guide you through the home buying and selling process. We are committed to fast, professional, and courteous service to help you understand and feel at ease throughout the process. Our trained and licensed agents at Simply Southern Realty specialize in the greater Lexington, Columbia area real estate market and are prepared to help you every step of the way. Please be sure to visit us at our website, simplysouthernrealtysc.com. It features the most in-depth information on local homes, neighborhoods, and schools. We are dedicated to providing you with the resources you need when researching the greater Lexington, Columbia real estate market. Please feel free to call us at Simply Southern with any questions at 803-399-8363. We're located at 528 Columbia Avenue in Lexington. Simply Southern Realty. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. Now, with tonight's keys to the game, here's Kurt Peachy. Well, Mike, I tell you what, <clears throat> I think the biggest key tonight, one of the things is going to be um, Hayden Thomas throwing strikes. Um, this team's not undefeated in the region by, you know, one nut and ball game. So they're going to be able to hit the ball. Defense better be ready to play. And then, you know, just be prepared if, you know, if Dreer jumps on us quick, get a couple runs in the first inning, something, got to settle down, chip away, and get back in the ball game. So, you know, we have, you know, we haven't really since summer, some, not summer, but who we play. Yeah, it was. But like I said, since those two games we played that one week and lost, you know. Yeah, that's it's, it. It's been easy. It's pretty, pretty much been easy the last you know, six or seven games. So uh, be prepared to get hit in the mouth and be ready to bounce back. You know, you're, these guys are a senior-laden team. Um, got your best pitcher on the mound. You got the same lineup we pretty much had all season. Just so, you know, just be prepared for whatever happens and be ready to come back if you get behind. And I tell you, one thing that really encouraged me, and I knew this team was special already, but that moment in the Chapin game, Kurt, they tied it up. Uh, in the bottom of the fourth inning, it was a 1-1 ball game. Bases are loaded, and we bring in the freshman, Brogan Sox. And he's got only one out, bases loaded. He gets a strikeout and then gets a ground out to Gibbs the end of the inning. And then we come roaring back with five runs yep. in the top of the fifth, and we cruise the rest of the way. And that showed me a lot of heart, yep. a lot of character, and a lot of scrappiness for the Bearcats. Well, like we talked about, you know, we had the same situation they had. We had base loaded and one out, and one out. And they changed pitchers, and their pitcher came in, and we attacked them and, and scored those five runs. So, 
Maddie you know, second. Big moment. Maddie second base. Absolutely. On, They're announcing the starting play. lineups tonight. And for Drew, they're wearing their road blank Getting uniforms and base. white numbers, Getting blue helmets, Sheldon blue Sheldon. hats. And the Bearcats wearing their home whites tonight, Back white jerseys, white pants, shot. black Number numbers, one. Bearcats Jack across Bear. the front, black helmet, uh, black uh, hats rather with white bills. Jack nice looking uniform. And a pretty day is going to get a little Jack chilly by the end of the game tonight, but uh, not bad temperature so far, Kurt. No, not yet. It's going to be, you know, going to be nice. We experienced two extremes last week. Uh, we had the cold game at Chapin. We were bundled up, thankfully, in the press box. And then I thought we were going to have heat stroke at Laurel Richland on Friday. Uh, so you never know what to expect when you come out of the ballpark. Nope, nope, nope. But we'll take another timeout, and when we come back, we'll be getting ready for the first pitch. Again, you're listening to Bear Camp Baseball right here on the Dive 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network. Attention Bearcat fans, here's your chance to help the student athletes of Brooklyn Casey High School by becoming a member of the Bearcat Club. Membership is open to everyone and your gifts help purchase items that our sports team couldn't otherwise afford. You can join the Bearcat Club this season for as little as $25. There are five different membership levels with terrific benefits. Go to our website at bchighbearcats.com and download a membership form. The Bearcat Club is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and all gifts are tax deductible. Go Bearcats! Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. At Simply Southern Realty, we know that buying a home or selling a home is one of the biggest and most exciting decisions a person can make. We aim to make the process as simple as possible. Our team of local experts here at Simply Southern Realty is ready to guide you through the home buying and selling process. We are committed to fast, professional, and courteous service to help you understand and feel at ease throughout the process. Our trained and licensed agents at Simply Southern Realty specialize in the greater Lexington and Columbia area real estate market and are prepared to help you every step of the way. Please be sure to visit us at our website, simplysouthernrealtysc.com. It features the most in-depth information on local homes, neighborhoods, and schools. We are dedicated to providing you with the resources you need when researching the greater Lexington, Columbia real estate market. Please feel free to call us at Simply Southern with any questions at 803-399-8363. We're located at 528 Columbia Avenue in Lexington. Simply Southern Realty. Game Day Turf Management is a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Like their name implies, Game Day Turf Management takes pride in developing high quality game day ready turf. Keeping that turf in top condition over the long term requires timely and appropriate maintenance and care. Game Day Turf Management can customize a maintenance program to fit your field providing complete facility management or working in conjunction with your existing staff. With over 20 years of experience in athletic field services, Game Day Turf Management is your full service provider for your sports fields. They started with natural grass fields and have grown into a leading service provider specializing in synthetic turf. Game Day Turf Management is happy to meet on your turf. Give them a call today at 803-446-5341. That's 803-446-5341. 41 Game Day Turf Management, a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Zeus and Bailey's Pet Spa. We're the gentle pet pampering specialists and we're certified dog groomers. We're open Monday through Saturday by appointment. You can call or text us at 803-543-8752. That's 803-543-8752. We're located at 1408 Charleston Highway in West Columbia. We are in the lower level of the Tropic Air Santa's Closet Building. Be sure to mention you heard about us on the Dove 1620. You can also follow us on Facebook. Zeus and Bailey's Pet Spa, the gentle pet pampering specialist. List. Burkett Burkett and Burkett CPAs is proud to honor the memory of Horace Burkett, captain of the BC football team in 1947, and his homecoming queen, Catherine Burkett. We are grateful to our dad and mom for their many years of devotion and service to the Casey West Columbia communities, and we try every day to walk in their footsteps. If we can help you or your family with any accounting or financial needs, we will be happy to assist you. Visit our website at burkettcpas.com. Thanks for your support, and go Bearcats! 
Attention Bearcat fans, here's your chance to help the student athletes of Brooklyn Casey High School by becoming a member of the Bearcat Club. Membership is open to everyone and your gifts help purchase items that our sports team couldn't otherwise afford. You can join the Bearcat Club this season for as little as $25. There are five different membership levels with terrific benefits. Go to our website at bchighbearcats.com and download a membership form. The Bearcat Club is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and all gifts are tax deductible. Go Bearcats! Attention Bearcat fans, here's your Tonight's chance. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. Welcome back to BC High School. Mike Higgins and my broadcast partner, Kurt Pichy, here on a sun splash day at the ballpark. And a top 10 matchup for you tonight. Going to be a dandy. Bearcats ranked number two in the latest coaches poll. And the Drew Blue Devils checking in at number eight. And Caleb Gibson will lead things off for the Blue Devils. Steps in from the right side of the plate, facing the left-hander, Hayden Thomas. Yeah, that's got a little different feel in there tonight, Mike. Sure does. A little extra spring in the step. Misses first pitch outside. Going to be like a heavyweight fight tonight. We'll see who can take the punch the best. Steps back in there. Thomas, quick worker. Wills, deals, hard hit ball right up the middle. Going to sneak through for a base hit for Caleb Gibson. We talked about him being one of the players to keep an eye on tonight for Dreer. Right back up in the middle. Thomas coming off his windup, didn't he? Pretty much gets set, went right now through his legs. Baseman, they Mike love to play Kelly. small ball, so look out for the bunt right here. We'll see lots of bunts as you'll see immediately from the start. McMillan creep in. Margo having to stay in. Keep Gibson at first base. Looks in, checks the runner. Thomas from the stretch, Dills. Checks a swing, no swing right there. Ball one on the outside. Thomas toes the rubber, steps back there, gets the side from Marshall. Thomas, quick throw over there. And a big shout out to Lewis Marshall. He is driving the uh, sub varsity around. They had a game in Pillion tonight, and he's watching our YouTube stream. Gets it on first base for Drew, let off with a single. Thomas to the plate, delivers right down Broadway with that one for a called strike. One ball, one strike. Looking at the outfield for the Bearcats, Thomas out in the left. You got Etheridge in center and Tanner State and Man in right field. We've seen Tanner in a couple of different spots this year. Uh, he's played all three outfields. He's played second base. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like you, you're a utility guy. Count right now stands. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Runner on first for Drew. Top of the first inning. Scoreless. To the plate. Called strike. Thomas spotted it early here. One ball, two strikes. Well, you know, same thing goes for Drew. They might not have seen pitching like we have to offer either, so not too many teams have pitchers like Hayden Thomas. <laughs> they want a slugfest for, with Gray Collegiate last Monday night. Gray Collegiate ranked number three in 2A. Ball misses outside, evens it up two and two. They won that game 15-9. to nine. And, of course, Coach Hornsby, Kind of a disciple of Coach uh, Charlie Assey, of course, the longtime coach here at Brooklyn Casey. Off-speed pitch, little dribbler back to the mound. Thomas wheels around, fires to first. Gets the runner out and advancing to second base will be Gibson. So there's one down with a runner in scoring position for the Blue Devils trying to draw first blood here. Yeah, as no, slow as that ball was hit off the nub end of the bat right there, Thomas had no choice but to go to first. Had to bring up first baseman Sheldon Kaufman for the Blue Devils. Again, on the season, 7-0. Perfect 6-0 region play. Bearcats 7-4, 4-0 in region play. And we've had our losses all to 5A teams. We had two to Somerville, who's in the top five. One to Lexington, also a top five team. And the other one uh, to Dorman. That's our four losses. Thomas looks over, gets the sign, checks the runner at second, and steps off the bump. 
We'll give you BC's pitching numbers from Friday night in a moment. Thomas to the plate, check swing, he went. Couldn't hold up on that one. Yeah, that slow off speed pitch. <laughs> I think he was sitting on fastball all the way with that one. Hayden Thomas' brother, Jackson Thomas, complete game on Friday, just three innings, no hits, no runs, only 30 pitches, but 24 strikes, four strikeouts and no walks. To the plate, going to take off for third and going to get a stolen bases. Tom Marshall came out of his crouch, but ball looked hit. like uh, Kaufman hit. might have kind of gotten in the way and the ball slipped out of his mitt. Uh, ball hit the ground first, too, so he didn't get a clean, you know, clean catch of it and be able to grab it and throw it also. So fly ball would score a run here, and Drew could draw first blood with one out. Count one ball and a strike with one out. Thomas delivers. Found back to the screen, two strikes. Love to get a strike out right here, Kurt. Yeah, you wanted to get that second out without that guy from third coming home. Hearing some cowbells out there tonight. And you'll have to give us our producer tonight and our cameraman, a Drear graduate, class of 2019, Rick Sagans. He's all Bearcat now, though. Looks down, gets the sign. Thomas wheels, deals, check swing, but fouls away. They hit him. Oh, it did hit him. It looked like it might have caught a piece of his bat, but they did say it hit him. Runner will go back to third, so we'll have runners on the corner. They'll confer right now to make sure that is the case. Call somebody out. Are they going to call the runner at third out? Are the uh, we're gonna they're gonna sort it out right here. Coach Hornsby wants an explanation. Trying to see what the call is here. I would think the batter was out because he squared a, around and it was two strikes, and that would have been a foul out. They're gonna send the runner back to third. That I mean from my vantage point, that's what it looked like. They'll sort it out right here. Conference right between the lines between home and first. So Coach Hornsbill head back to the dugout. They don't get an explanation, so he's out. So it's two outs. Runner will stay on third, so Gibson stays at third base with two outs. We'll have to see what they score that here. They're going to call it a strikeout. That's the official ruling with game changer. That'll bring up shortstop Jack Painter, one of our players to watch tonight. He is smooth fielder, called strike outside corner by Thomas. Facing the cleanup man, got to be careful right here. He's got a little bit of pop in that bat as well. Thomas looks in, gets the sign, pumps, fires, and going to miss outside with that one. One ball, one strike. Aiden Thomas last time out. Three innings against Laurel Richland. That came last Tuesday night. Three innings pitch, no runs, no hits. I thought that hit, but going to call a ball on that one. I look close. Might have been a little bit inside. Only threw 33 pitches last time out against LR. Had 27 strikes with eight strikeouts. Pumps, fires, got a piece of that one. Two balls, two strikes. Got an opening day tomorrow for Major League Baseball. I'm excited. I am, too. I've got two fantasy teams. I'm sure it won't go well, but I'm looking forward to it regardless. I had to go, make a, I had to go add a shortstop today. On oh, mine, I'm, huh? I'm glad you said something. I need to look yeah, back at mine. I need to look. Two balls, two strikes. Thomas steps off. One of my guys is on the injury list to start the season. I had to pick up a shortstop real quick. Gibson on third after getting a leadoff single. Got moved to second on the fielder's choice and stole a base. Right to Parker Murgo. He scoops it up. Over to the pitcher. Ooh, Thomas covers and wins a foot race against Painter. Bang, bang play, and they'll strand a runner. We'll head to the bottom of the first inning. We are scoreless through a half inning. Back in more in just a moment here on the Dive 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network. At Simply Southern Realty, we know that buying a home or selling a home is one of the biggest and most exciting decisions a person can make. We aim to make the process as simple as possible. Our team of local experts here at Simply Southern Realty is ready to guide you through the home buying and selling process. We are committed to fast, professional, and courteous service to help you understand and feel at ease throughout the process. Our trained and licensed agents at Simply Southern Realty specialize in the greater Lexington and Columbia area real estate market and are prepared 
here to help you every step of the way. Please be sure to visit us at our website, simplysouthernrealtysc.com. It features the most in-depth information on local homes, neighborhoods, and schools. We are dedicated to providing you with the resources you need when researching the greater Lexington, Columbia real estate market. Please feel free to call us at Simply Southern with any questions at 803-399-8363. We're located at 528 Columbia Avenue in Lexington. Simply Southern Realty. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. And welcome back to Brooklyn KC High School. Mike Higgins, Kurt Pichy here with you on the Dove 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network. Glad you could join us here. Bottom of the first inning for the Bearcats this inning. Leading off will be Tanner State and back behind that will be Parker Murgo and then Hayden Thomas, the first three batters. Yeah, we'll see how we start out right here. Tanner State in the quad essential leadoff man. Got some power and got lots of speed. Got a great crowd out there. Most oh. I've seen so far this season. Cook, high leg kick, hard hit ball, bounced over to third base. Bradley handles oh. it, high throw, but a good job by Kaufman at first base to jump back on the bag. Good defensive play, one pitch, one out. Yeah, beat him by a step. Nolan Cook looking at his numbers last time out against OW on Friday in a 12 to one win. Pitch three innings, gave up no hits, no runs, 41 pitches, 28 strikes. Had eight Ks and no walks in that game. Very similar numbers to Hayden Thomas last week. Yeah, the plate Parker Murgo for the Bearcats, batting from the left side, had a little tweaked hamstring. Pitch misses outside. Coach thinks he's just about at 100%. Kept him out, obviously, Friday. Didn't need him, but he gutted it out. He got hurt last Tuesday, but gutted it out Wednesday against Chapin. Didn't want to let his teammates down. Pump fires, hard hit ball. Second baseman ranging over Elliott. Throws safe. to first, safe. Yep. Legged it out. Parker Murgo didn't look like he had a banged up hamstring on that play. But give credit to Elliott who ranged over and made that play, <clears throat> stopped it, and made a heck of a throw from second. Yeah, when he came up with it, he kind of fumbled with it a little bit in his glove, Mike. That might have cost him that one step right there, but still was a great play. Pitcher number 10. Hayden Thomas. And to bring up Hayden Thomas for the Bearcats. Home run against Chapin last week. Yeah, that was a no-doubter. Sure was. Like to get one right here. Nolan Cook looks in to Tank Bennett for the side. Checks the runner. He'll deal from the stretch. Back to the plate. Uh, just miss upstairs with that one. Runner on first for the Bearcats here with one out. Bottom of the first inning. Scoreless here from Brooklyn Casey. Mike Higgins, Kirk Pichy here with you. Cook looks in, checks the runner at first and delivers. Going to miss with that win. 2-0 your count on Hayden Thomas. We don't generally see many left-handed pitchers nope, either, Kirk. Sure don't. We have a couple. But We've got two, our two aces, our, our two starting guys in region play both lefties. Whole bullfin's right-handed. Off-speed pitch. Gets away and taking second base will be Murgo. It's a runner on scoring position. BC cooking with grease right now. He was a little bit wild in warm-ups. I was watching him over there. He was a little bit high, just like that pitch right there. I think the runner on first kind of bothers him. Now Murgo over on second. See if Painter tries to keep him close. He'll sneak up behind him. Pitch on the way, going to miss upstairs. Ball four on four straight pitches. Now first and second for the cleanup man, Time Marshall. The one thing about BC batters, Mike, they don't swing at very many bad pitches. They might no, take sure a, don't. They might take a call strike three every once in a while, but they don't. Uh, they don't look. They don't swing at very many bad ones. Number seven, Jackson Corley. Jackson Corley coming as a pinch runner. Courtesy runner for the pitcher Hayden Thomas. First and second for Ty Marshall. Boy, he can gain one out of the park quick like two. Don't see him bat from the right side much. That's his natural side of the plate. Became a switch hitter in seventh grade. 
Awaits the pitch. Got to miss upstairs with that one. Ty signed with Clemson back in December. Big Philadelphia Phillies fan. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Clemson, he's got two strikes. But he's still a Bearcat. That's good to go. He is a Bearcat through and through. <laughs> Uh, Pitch of the way. Fouls that one away. Favorite baseball memory was winning the district championship last year against Hanahan. It was BC's first region uh, district championship, rather, since 2013. So a great memory there for him. Cook looks in, gets the sign. One ball, one strike, one out. First and second for the Bearcats. Bottom of the first. Deliver off speed. Pitch gets between first and second. Digging out Murgo. Waving the arms, Coach Murgo at home, play, safe, slides in head first, and now runners on the corner, first and third. Corley went from first to third, and getting on first base and driving in a run. Ty Marshall stands and delivers. Okay, you don't get many times on the right-hand side, then he hits it to the opposite field. Got to love it. And like bring you. up center fielder B.J. Etheridge. Yeah, he knew Coach Murgo was going to send, you know, now batting, center fielder. He was waving those arms yeah, wildly, he was wasn't he? Yeah. He was going to send Parker. He almost followed him all the way down to the plate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Had to bring a B.J. Etheridge, another left-handed batter for the Bearcats. We're loaded with lefties. Cook checks the runner. First and third. He'll duel from the stretch. All-speed pitch. Going to miss way upstairs. Bennett has to jump out of the crouch to grab that one. Yeah, he doesn't have his good stuff right now. He's struggling a little bit which is our benefit, but. Got the first out on one pitch. Tanner State and ground out to third base. Afterwards looks in, called strike. You know, he Evens that. things up, one and one. Let her high, but, you know, got to swing at those. Corley at third base, Marshall at first after an RBI single. Corley a pinch runner for Hayden Thomas, who walked earlier. Cook looks in. From the stretch, hit Skies foul. Had a hit and run on, yep. Fouls it out into the parking lot. We'll see if it hits anything. I think it got over the bus of Dreer. I think it went that yard back there. As long as it don't hit my car. He hit yours, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to make fun of my car again. It's an easy target. I get it. I get it. No, I ain't going to hit you. You have to go straight up and straight over the back of the press box. Not likely, but stranger things have happened. Cook will deal from the stretch. Looks in, going to miss outside and high again. Evens things up. Two balls, two strikes with one out. And if you're Cook, love to get a strike out right here and get two outs with runners on first and third. Up next for BC will be Jordan Gibbs, our shortstop. Etheridge waves the bat, awaits the pitch. 2-2 two -two count. Etheridge ready to uncoil and going to miss low with that one. Count runs full, three and two with one out. One and nothing BC here in the first inning. Drew Blue Devil stranded a runner at third last half inning. Pumps, fires, runner going, hit and run on and out between short and third. Scoring from third will be Corley. And now runners on first and second for BC and an RBI single for Etheridge. That's three hits and a walk. How about the, both the base hits? Last two base hits been by opposite field. It's amazing. One to a right-hander to the Out left. Plate, shortstop, number three, Jordan Gibbs. Had to bring up Jordan Gibbs. We have got two terrific shortstops going at it tonight. Jack Painter for Dreer and Jordan Gibbs. I would trade Jordan Gibbs for anybody. Uh, he's been rock solid over here. Maybe one, maybe two airs. I've seen him in, what, three years now yeah. almost? Yeah. Cook pumps, fires, swing and a miss. Gibbs couldn't catch up with that one. No balls and a strike with first and second. Still just one out. Surprised a little. We may be not playing a little small ball here, but, you know, you got the bats going. You got the pitcher on the rope. So. Yeah, keep riding it. Yep. Cook set at the chest. Kicks, fires. Going to miss a little bit high with that one. Evens it up. One ball, one strike with one out. First and second for the Bearcats. Marshall on second. Etheridge on first for BC. Sixth batter of the inning for the Bearcats. BC with a five-game winning streak here regular season. Last loss March the 9th against Somerville here at home. Safe. And he's safe at third. Stolen base. Second one of the night for BC. Now runners on the corner. First and third. 
Love to get as many runs early here as you can possible, Kurt. Put the pressure on Dreer. We said it would be a heavyweight battle. See who flinches first. Got to withstand the pressure in this game. It's going to be back and forth. 2 nothing Bearcats lead. Third run, 90 feet away. Still only one out. See if Etheridge takes off running here. Pumps, fires, fouls out, went back. Two balls, two strikes with one out. Couldn't ask for a better start. Absolutely pitcher perfect, Kurt. Yep. Nolan Cook struggling after that first batter. This next pitch will be number 21 of the inning. Gibbs waves the bat, awaits the pitch. 2-2 two -two coming up. Gibbs steps in. Going to lay off that one high. Fastball misses. 3-2. and two. Count full again. They already got somebody warming up in the bullpen over there. They have got a deep pitching staff as deep as BC's. Cook looks in, checks the runner over at first. Set at the chest. Payoff pitch on the way. Runs that inside ball four. Bases are loaded for Jackson Thomas. Chance to be a hero right here. Had three hits this three. inning. Jackson, Had two walks and a ground out the third. Jackson Thomas hit her number seven of the inning. BC went five of 17 against LR, hitting on uh, Friday, rather. Added 294. Three for three of stolen bases. So far, two for two tonight. Thomas awaits the pitch. Off speed. Ooh, just missed on that one. One ball, no strike on the breaking pitch. Thomas is first at bat. We've got Robert McMillan on deck. Here's just one out with the bases juiced. Thomas, hard hit ball, sprayed out to right field. Camping out under it deep was Gibson. And tagging from third and touching home, Ty Marshall. That'll give BC a 3 to nothing lead. And advancing over to third base will be Etheridge. So a job well done by Thomas on the sack fly. Yeah, you, got, <clears throat> you moved two runners, one home and one to third. So did your job. First and third now for the Bearcats. Now number eight hitter, Robert McMillan. Robert McMillan. Ethan Smith, DH on deck. Looks down, gets the sign. Bennett flashes the fingers. Cook delivers. Going to miss with that one just a little <clears throat> bit high, maybe. Her ball misses. 1-0 one, one -oh count. Cook trying to leave two BC runners stranded right here. Right down Broadway with that one. Evens it up. 1-1. One one. Outfield playing regulation depth. Looks in. Shanks the runner over at first. First and third for the Bearcats. McMillan at the plate for BC, a senior transfer from Northside. Pops that out to center field. Deep but right on the money to Muir. Will end the inning. BC will strand two, but not before they plate three runs as well. We head to the top of the second. Bearcats leading this one three to nothing. Bearcat baseball right here on the Dove 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network. If you're looking for an auto repair shop that you can trust, you found us here at Lorix Auto Repair. We know how important it is to find a car service you can rely on, so your satisfaction is our top priority each and every day. You will feel the difference that exceptional customer care makes when you work with Lorix Auto Repair. We know our team sets us apart, saving you time and money, not to mention worry. Be sure to stop in and see us weekdays from 8 to 530 at 4804 Augusta Road in Lexington, or visit us online at lorixauto.com. Be sure to check out WestMetroNews.com. It's your ultra-local news source. To find out what's going on in Casey, West Columbia, and Springdale, along with the absolute best coverage of Lexington 2 schools, be sure to check out WestMetroNews.com, your ultra-local news source. You can also follow us on social media at Facebook and Twitter. For all of your latest local breaking news, visit WestMetroNews.com. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit SimplySouthernRealtySC.com. Seems like you're 
Hey, and welcome back to Brooklyn Casey High School. Mike Higgins, Kurt Pichy here with you. Bearcats played three runs in the first inning to go up over number eight, Dreer. Three to nothing, Tom for the second. And Hayden Thomas, a good-looking first inning, gave up the leadoff single, but then got a fielder's choice, a strikeout, and a ground out to Parker Murgo to end the inning. He'll face Jacob Muir to lead things off here. Center fielder with a little bit of speed. Great First start. pitch, strike Great start one for BC Mike. Absolutely, exactly couldn't have drawn it up it. any better. No, Kurt. sure couldn't. Muir steps back in there. Another right-handed hitter facing the lefty Thomas. Thomas wheels, deals, slow grounder, charging in. McMillan throws safe. across his body. Going to be safe, but I tell you, that ball could have been taken by either Gibbs or McMillan. McMillan stepped in front of it and. Hurled it across, but uh, not going to get there in time. Muir with plenty of speed to burn. Legs that one out, an infield single. Yeah, I don't think either, no matter which one of them was got that nah. one, he was safe. It was a slow roller, and he's fast. That's a deadly combination. Second in in a row, they've let off with a single. That'll bring up Luke Bradley, the third baseman. Got the first out of the game for them with a ground ball from Tanner Staten. We're going to give you an update on the sub-varsity in just a few minutes. Lewis Marshall going to keep us updated on that. I know a lot of folks over there are listening in as well. Pumps fires going to miss high. Marshall fakes the throw over to first base. Give a big shout-out to Matt Edwards listening. He still wants us to do some cut-ins in between innings and get video of us. I don't know about that, Kurt. No. <laughs> Mike don't have the face for radio. He has Mike. face for radio. <laughs> Looks in, pump, shows a bunny, he pulls the bat back, called strike. Uh, they love to play small ball, so got to watch uh, out for the bunt right here. McMillan way up in. If we do some cutting, let me know my granddaughter wants to watch. Yeah, I so. bet so. She wants to see her papa. Yep. Thomas checks the runner at first. Quick throw back. He's got a good move, too. All of our pitchers have great pickoff yeah. moves. I think they work on that every day. 3-0 ball game. Talking with Coach Sharpie before the game. Weren't able to get a lot of fielding practice in this week because of the weather and the field situation. A lot of inside work, a lot of hitting practice. Worked on some fielding some bunts inside as well. Thomas looks in, gets the sign, tries to bunt that one, but fouls it back. Two strikes now. Bunt might be off. Yeah, you would think so. Bradley at the plate for them. Left-handed hitter. First hit bat, runner on first, nobody out, 3 nothing. B.C. lead. Top of the second inning, Mike Higgins, Kirk Pichy here with you. Whether you're listening on the Dove 1620 or watching on Palmetto State Sports Network, we're glad you could be here. Our next TV game will be on Saturday against the airport. That'll be a 6 o'clock uh, first pitch. We'll go on the air right around 5.30. Hope to have interviews with both Coach Sharpie and uh, Casey Bradwell with the airport. Talk to him a little bit today, get a fill on the Eagles. Going to throw down to second got and got the runner at second on the strikeout, but the runner does get to first base. Well, that'll be one out. Good play by Marshall right there to throw it down there and get him in a pickle. Now batting left fielder number four, Zay McPherson. So, so quickly two outs. Well, both guys are out, okay. Yeah, he got the strikeout. So he didn't have to, th with a runner on first, he didn't have to throw down and uh, ended up, it looked like Muir just took off for second. I don't know if it was a hit and run on right there or what the situation was. Big play. But two outs just like that. First pitch going to miss outside for McPherson, the left fielder. Yep. Keep your pitch count down a little bit too, get those easy second out. Absolutely. Two outs, one ball, no strike. Thomas induces a pop fly. McKinchock will give way out in right field and gathering it is Tanner Staten and a non-orthodox 1-2-3 inning, but so be it. Thomas, an easy inning for him. He'll set him down in an order. We'll head to the bottom of the second inning. Bearcats lead this one three to nothing. Back with more, back with just a moment. We'll hear from Game Day Turf Management. Game Day Turf Management is a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Like their name implies, 
Game Day Turf Management takes pride in developing high-quality game day ready turf. Keeping that turf in top condition over the long term requires timely and appropriate maintenance and care. Game Day Turf Management can customize a maintenance program to fit your field. Providing complete facility management or working in conjunction with your existing staff. With over 20 years of experience in athletic field services, Game Day Turf Management is your full service provider for your sports fields. They started with natural grass fields and have grown into a leading service provider specializing in synthetic turf. Game Day Turf Management is happy to meet on your turf. Give them a call today at 803-446-5341. That's 803-446-5341. 41 Game Day Turf Management, a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit Simply Southern Realty SC.com. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, And welcome back to Brooklyn Casey High School. Mike Hague, it's Kurt Peachy here with you on the Dove 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network. And uh, right now, BC leading this one 3 to nothing. Bottom of the second. Got an update from the uh, JV game. JV right now beating Pillion 2 to nothing. Top of the third inning. I think they're like 12 and 1 right now, Kurt. So having a very good season so far. Yeah, they're looking up and up for BC program. That's for sure, Mike. Got, got a new pitcher in. Number seven, Matt Morris, going from the DH role, is pitching the second inning. So, Ethan Moore, the DH, will lead off for the Bearcats. Moore on the bump. He'll bring it in from the as a right hander called strike on the outside corner. Well, again, one thing you've got to look at too that would leave Cook if you need him Friday. Pitch on the way, going to miss outside with that one, high and away. Evens it up, one ball, one strike. First at bat for Ethan Smith, top of the lineup coming up. Tanner Staten on deck. Smith steps in there from the right side of the plate. Awaits the pitch, right down Broadway for a called strike. Three-nothing ball game, Bearcats lead. Bottom of the second inning, good matchup, top ten matchup. BC 7 and 4 in the season, perfect 4 and 0 in region play and Drew Blue Devils 7 and 0, 6 and 0 in region play. Curveball going to get him to chase that one and a strikeout. Nice that'll, pitch right there. That will be the first one of the game for Moore. Now batting. Right and that'll bring up Tanner State no for one, a ground at the third is first at bat last inning. Matt Moore standing in there. Had a five-inning game against O.W. Cook had pitched three innings of that one. Then they brought Bradley in for an inning and Luke Pill for the other inning. Matt Moore did pitch against O.W. last Tuesday. Went four innings, gave up no hits, no runs, 62 total pitches, 40 of those strikes, six strikeouts, and one walk. Got some good-looking numbers. One ball, no strike with one out. Tanner State and our leadoff hitter up there trying to get aboard here. Talked about him earlier in the game. Been able to play a lot of different positions for BC. All three positions outfit has also played some second this year. Slaps that out to center field. Hit it on the button. A deep fly ball, but tracking it down Muir. He took him to the warning track, though. Tanner took that for a ride, but a long, noisy out. We've hit some good balls out to center field tonight. Just hadn't got him quite out there far enough. Yeah, he hit that one about 360 probably. Got every bit of that one. That'll bring up Parker Murgo for the Bearcats. Yeah, he singled and scored our first run. And three singles that first inning. Yep. Scored from beat out an infield hit and then scored from second on a, on a base hit to right field. So Morris fastball misses outside part of the plate. One ball, no strikes. Moore trying to come in and squelch things for the Bearcats. Misses inside with that one. 2-0. 
If Murdo reaches, you got Hayden Thomas coming up. He walked last time. He's got a long ball in him. Or pumps, fires. Ooh, wow, that looked like a strike, but <laughs> yes, it just missed inside. I'm not sure about that one. I think the catcher I turned around asking where it was that at because they looked good. All of us up here <laughs> it thought it sure did. Good. We call them like we see them. That looked like a strike. Moore peers down, pumps, fires. Almost same place, if not a little bit lower yeah, on that one. I thought the last pitch was better. That's what they call payback. <laughs> I'll give you that one. Moore sets in there. Called strike on the inside. Count is run full, three and two. Murgo not really knowing what to expect here. Right, what Strike zone a little all over the place. Murgo waits the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three, and Moore will set him down. We'll head to the top of the third inning. Score will remain. Brooklyn KC3, Drew nothing. We'll take a quick timeout back with more. You're listening to Bear Camp Baseball right here on the Dove 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network. Back with more as we hear from So Everly Perfect Photography. Hey y'all, my name is Victoria Pichy and I own So Everly Perfect Photography. I offer a variety of sessions including newborn, maternity, family portraits, weddings, and any type of special moment you would like captured. My studio is located right in the heart of Lexington. I love to capture your story. Visit my Facebook page or Instagram to see upcoming events I have planned. For any questions or inquiries, please email me at sepphotography at yahoo.com or message us on Facebook. Burkett, Burkett, and Burkett CPAs is proud to honor the memory of Horace Burkett, captain of the BC football team in 1947, and his homecoming queen, Catherine Burkett. We are grateful to our dad and mom for their many years of devotion and service to the Casey West Columbia communities, and we try every day to walk in their footsteps. If we can help you or your family with any accounting or financial needs, we will be happy to assist you. Visit our website at burkettcpas.com. Thanks for your support, and go Bearcats! Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. Rumors spread around in that Texas town. Hey, welcome back to Brooklyn Casey High School. Mike Hague, it's Kurt Peachy here with you. 3-0 Bearcats lead. Top of the third inning. And leading off for them will be Matt Moore. Trying to get a rally started for them. And we talked about this being a heavyweight fight, Kurt. Yep. Seeing who could battle the storm. And Drew did a good job coming back last inning and bringing Moore in the game. And a 1-2-3 inning for the Blue Devils. Yeah, he mowed us down right in a row. Aiden Thomas misses, misses with that pitch, low and inside. Beautiful afternoon here at the ballpark. Temperature a little bit chilly today with that wind blowing in. Thomas gets the sign from Marshall. Marshall sets up on the outside part of the plate, pumps, fires, and just misses with that one. Quickly 2-0. and oh. And the leadoff man has reached the last two innings. Caleb Gibson led off the first with a single, and Jacob Muir in the second inning with a single. Pumps, fires, boy, thought that was right down the heart of the plate right there, but misses again, 3-0 quickly. Thomas does not walk many. So 3-0 and all, trying to battle back right here against Moore. Moore batting from the left side of the plate and watches a cold strike, 3-1. and one. Thomas trying to battle back from a 3-0 countdown. Dreher got some pop in their bat, though. They're averaging 12.4 runs per game. That's an impressive stat. And draws the walk. Tosses that bat high in the air and takes his base. Their only non-double-digit game was a 5-1 win over Gilbert, so they can put some runs on the board. First walk of the game for Hayden Thomas. That'll bring up the number nine hitter, Tank Bennett. Tank Bennett. wonder what his first real name is. I went to school with a kid we called Tank. It was Chris Hall. Throw down by uh, Marshall, not able quite to get it. Murga did a good job to jump up and grab that one. You better stay close to that base. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. Hayden has a shot of picking you off, or Marshall will throw down to first. 
They're aggressive on the base pass. We'll see what they're trying to do right here. Pops that bunt up and well, goes out of play. <laughs> Might be the far, longest foul punt, bunt I've seen. They love the small ball. Station to station baseball. Down three to nothing is Dreer. Time of the third inning. Mike Higgins, Kurt Pichy here with your home game for the Bearcats. It's a rarity. You don't have gloves on. Called strike two. He pulled the bunt out at the last second. Probably a little high for him. Maybe a little inside to try to bunt. And just like that. One ball and two strikes. Thomas would love a strikeout right here. Chanks the runner at first. He'll do it from the stretch. One, two counts. Going to miss outside. Evens it up two and two. Peel the pinch runner on first. Talking with Coach Murgo, he talked about how great Tank Bennett was behind the plate. Said he kind of reminds you of Yogi Berra. Kind of got that short, stocky build about him. Just a solid ball player. Thomas looks in, punches, fires, called strike three. Hayden Thomas will mow him down. Strikeout number three of the game, and that's a big one. First out of the inning. Top of the lineup coming up with Caleb Gibson. He's got their... First hit of the night back in the first inning. They've got two so far tonight. So Caleb Gibson right up the middle his last time at the plate. Couple of practice cuts. He's ready to go. Thomas wheels, deals, breaking pitch, called strike. Bearcats have won five straight games here in the regular season. Last loss, 4-1 to one at home against Somerville back on March the 9th. Skies that one or dribbles it foul down the third base side. And how many region games we got in a row? 18 in a row. The last region loss was all the way back on April 22nd, 2021. Wow. Just shy of two years. I want to keep that streak alive here tonight. Thomas will check the runner at first. Pumps, fires in the dirt, gets away from Marshall. Can't locate it. Taking off for second is Peel. So they've got a runner in scoring position now with a wild pitch. One ball, two strikes. Still one out. Love to get a big strikeout right here. Stems back in there. Thomas peers down. Marshall will flash the fingers. Checks pill at second. Dills to the plate, off-speed pitch, going to miss outside with that one, two and two. Top of the third inning, Bearcats lead this one three to nothing. Dreer threatening, they're averaging over 12 runs a game so far in this season. See if we can't battle back and get a strikeout right here. Pumps, fires, fastball, going to be sparked out to left center field. Going to drop in and... Going to go all the way to the wall, easily touching home plate, be pill from second, and a double there by Gibson. Again, one of the players we wanted to watch tonight. And it's a 3-1 ball game. He got a hold of that one and sent it out to left center field. Yeah, he put it in the gap. Nobody can get to that one. Probably one of the deepest parts of the field. Double and an RBI. That'll bring up Micah Elliott, another good hitter. Micah Elliott. That's Gibson's two for two so far. Jurors returning five starters from a team that finished 22 and 10 last year. Throw back over there. Ball gets away at the outfield on the throw to second. And a going to get over to third base for Dreer. Things coming up. Roses for him right now as Gibson takes third base on the field pickoff attempt. So you're trying to make it a one-run game right here. Need to get this second out. Thomas looks in. This guy's out when foul. Going to get past the bullpen and out in the parking lot. Three-one ball game. Gibson on third base for them. Hard hit oh. ball to third base. McMillan can't grab it. Only play is at the plate, oh. and he's going to be safe. 
Throw is low. Marshall able to keep it in front of him. So Elliott will be in first and drives in a run, and just like that, a 3-2 ball game. Yeah, it wasn't, he got a handcuff down there. Nothing he can do about that one. Made a close play at the plate, but. Sure did. That'll bring up Kaufman. He struck out back in the first. Thomas struggling a little bit, trying to get out of this inning. Still just one out. Now batting for the Blue Devils, first baseman, number 15, Sheldon Kaufman. Kaufman to 0 for 1. We got cleanup man Jack Painter coming up next. Thomas just needs that second out here, trying to settle down. Showing bunt. Lays down a beauty but foul. That would have been trouble if it would have stayed fair. Tries to send that down the first baseline. We talked about being able to withstand punches, and Dreer did that after a brutal first inning. Yep. BC stranded two runners but plated uh, three runs in that inning. But they settled down, made a pitching change, and more came Whoa. in, and a throw gets away. Over at first from Murgo and taking second, another failed pickoff move. And, man, the Blue Devils have got it brewing right there. Their fans are starting to make some noise on that first base side. Elliott takes second base, tying run, and scoring position now. We're going to huddle up. They're going to come out. Coach Murgo going to come out and talk to the guys. Yeah, sometimes I think you just, just worry about the batter. That runner on first wasn't going anywhere unless he got moved up by the batter. Just kind of settle down and it's those strikes. This is a huge game tonight for both teams. Obviously, whoever wins this series is going to have a leg up. And I believe if Dreer can win this series, they've got it cinched up. They've only got LR left, and they should breeze through that series. For BC, we've still got Swansea, which on paper looks like two – Easy wins, but then Gilbert starting to play a little bit better, and you never know what's going to happen when you play no, Gilbert. Nope, sure don't. Great program, great rich tradition with Coach Burnett over there. So got to just take care of business here tonight and then start thinking about Friday. Thomas looks in, gets the sign from Marshall. Kaufman still at the plate. No balls and a strike with one out. Runner on second. That's the tying run in scoring position. Thomas checks the runner. Fakes the throw. Diving back there is Elliott. Let off the inning with Gibson hitting a double. Or rather, we let off with a walk by Moore. He scored a run, and Gibson with a double. Got two strikes. Really pick up Thomas if he can get the K right here. Chopper over to McKinchon, gobbles it up, throws over to first, but station to station baseball. That fielder's choice moves Elliott over to third. Now that to bring up Jack Painter. He's the cleanup man. You got to be careful right here, Kurt. Yeah, Heck of a hitter. Well, that you just got to stay away from the wild pitch, the pass ball. Um, you know, something to that degree, don't let this third run get home. Make them earn it. Painter awaits the pitch. Right down Broadway for a called strike. Yeah, don't throw it over there. Don't worry. Don't throw down there. Don't worry about that. Just get this batter. Two outs. BC hanging on right now. Three to two. Tying run on third base. There you Swing go. and a miss. Strike two. Yeah. Chance to pick up another strike out of this inning. Yeah, Mike, you got two outs. Take care of the batter. That runner ain't going nowhere unless you do something or something bad. Looking for his fourth strike out of the game. Wills deals. Going to miss outside corner. One ball, two strikes on Painter. Tying run at third base for the Blue Devils. Elliott setting over there. Got him. Got him on a swing and a miss. And strikeout number four of the game. And they'll strand another runner on third, but they played two runs. And what a dandy we've got on, going on here in Casey. 
3-2 ball game as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Stick around. You're listening to Bear Camp Baseball right here on the Dove 1620 and streaming on YouTube at Palmetto State Sports Network. Back with more in just a moment. At Simply Southern Realty, we know that buying a home or selling a home is one of the biggest and most exciting decisions a person can make. We aim to make the process as simple as possible. Our team of local experts here at Simply Southern Realty is ready to guide you through the home buying and selling process. We are committed to fast, professional, and courteous service to help you understand and feel at ease throughout the process. Our trained and licensed agents at Simply Southern Realty specialize in the greater Lexington and Columbia area real estate market and are prepared to help you every step of the way. Please be sure to visit us at our website, simplysouthernrealtysc.com. It features the most in-depth information on local homes, neighborhoods, and schools. We are dedicated to providing you with the resources you need when researching the greater Lexington, Columbia real estate market. Please feel free to call us at Simply Southern with any questions at 803-399-8363. We're located at 528 Columbia Avenue in Lexington. Simply Southern Realty. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. And what a dandy we got going on here. Three, four, five hitters up right here. So let's see if we can't bounce back and get us a run or two here. Aiden Thomas leading off. He walked his first at bat. Matt Moore has come in and kind of squelched BC's bat. Called strike on the outside corner. Yeah, he's looked good so far. Had two strikeouts. Only faced three batters last inning. Got a deep fly ball from Tanner Staten. Sandwich in between two strikeouts. Off-speed pitch. Flops it out to left field. Kind of in no man's land and giving chase third baseman Bradley and left fielder uh, McPherson, uh, but not able to catch up with that as it gets foul. No balls, two strikes, 3-2 ball game. BC holding on right now, bottom of the third inning. Been a well-played game. Both teams battling hard. It's fun baseball. We've been waiting for one of these games. We thought we had it against Chape the other night. We did for five innings. But then once BC got those five runs, it pretty much was over after that. Thomas awaits the pitch. Going to miss on the outside part of the plate. Aiden, a Texas Rangers fan. Thought there would be more Atlanta Braves fans, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, but the game has expanded so much for the younger kids. And, when it, you know, I know it's on Sports South a lot, but it's not like the old days of TBS when you got to watch it every single night. Thomas swing and a miss. 705, 735. And he'll strike out. Well, my son in law, you know, they're from he's from Texas, and I think it was fifteen or sixteen okay. years in a row. They went to every every game, opening day game. Him and a bunch of other guys. So that they even when they got older, they lived different places. They always met for the first game. Oh wow. Tom Marshall up. Single on an RBI, his first at bat. One for one tonight. It was all the way back in the first inning. And right now, Moore has set down four straight Bearcats. Flies that up. Not going to leave the infield. Third baseman Bradley arranging over. And he'll die for it. Did he get it? He didn't. And look at Marshall. And a awesome. double Marshall was just motoring all the way around as soon as it left his bat. And if you're a young person at home watching this, that's why you hustle. Yeah, he never slowed down. He ran all the way to second base. That is just textbook baseball. Matter of fact, by the time the ball hit the ground, he was three steps from the bag, Mike. He hustled. And just like that, we got a runner in scoring BJ. position. Looked like a routine out. Uh, B.J. Etheridge a chance to do some damage. Single RBI his last at bat in the first. Lefty facing a righty. Moore checks the runner at second with one out. Dills to the plate. Going to miss with a fastball outside. Blue Devils 7-0 on the season. 6-0 in region play. Currently ranked eighth in the SCBCA coaches poll. BC at number two. Moore gets the sign from Bennett. Glove at his chest. Delivers. Just misses with that one. You know, BJ had a... 
base hit, an RBI in the first inning, brought home the third run. That's where we stand right now, 3-2, but we yep. got a runner in scoring position right now with Ty Marshall. Like a routine pop-up in the infield. Third baseman Bradley dived toward the pitching mound and couldn't grab it. And hustling was Marshall, who ended up on second base, sliding in safe. Great play. You almost think the shortstop may, have, may be able to call him off on that one because the ball was tailing more towards him, but I mean, once he got up under it. Etheridge steps back in there. Two balls and a strike. Moore set at the chest. He'll do it from the stretch. Throws it around out in the outfield. And Ain't nope. Was Not no going to go anywhere. Good backup job by Muir out in center field. There was nobody on the base. The second baseman went back. The shortstop was, was in his normal spot. So miscommunication right there by the pitcher. Absolutely was. Thank God it didn't cost them an error. But Marshall, give him credit. He knew where the center fielder was when he came up. More with an inning and a third so far. This will be his 22nd pitch. Etheridge awaits. So bat from the left side. Pumps, fires right up the middle. Marshall's going to be motoring in. Might be a play at the plate. Throw, going to be cut off. No, and home. Bang, bang, play. Did he get him? Yeah. Yes, he did. Great tag by Bennett. And a good throw from Muir out in center field. My goodness. Marshall did not hesitate. Coach Murgo didn't hesitate to send him. Just a bang, bang play. And one of those plays you might look back on toward the end of the game, but can't have any regrets. That was the right call. Coach Murgo is going to come out and try to argue it. Yeah, he's got a good arm. Um, or Coach Sharpie, rather. They're going to question something whether or not he was blocking the plate. And they'll confer both umpires, and it might have a point there. He can't block the plate. Nope. Going to keep the call still out. The Juror fans will make a lot of noise on the first base side. Yeah, like I said, they, you know, that was that was bang bang play. You got to make the guy throw the ball, now that's for sure. Shortstop, number three, Jordan Gibbs. And Jordan Gibbs left up to him. That could have been a huge run as it stands. BC still up three to two with Etheridge on first and two outs. Gibbs at the plate. He walked back in the first inning, his second at bat. Quick snap throw. Moore's got a nice little move over there. Quick snap throw. Etheridge back at first in time. Slides under the tag. Moore checks the runner. Gets the sign. Pumps. Fires. And right down the heart of the plate with that one. No balls and a strike with two outs. Three to two. BC with their runs in the first inning. And the Drew Blue Devils answered in the top of this inning. Just misses low with that one. Three hits for Dreer, four for the Bearcats so far. More checks, Etheridge. We'll see if Etheridge takes off right here. Gibbs awaits the Whoa. pitch, almost hit him, and not In, quite. Inside. Just got out of the way of that one. His jersey was a little bit baggier, might have hit him. <laughs> it might have. <laughs> uh, might have pulled a Jordan Wise and got a cheeseburger. There you go. Moore checks the runner at first. Two outs. That's Chopper right. over the third, gobbled up by Bradley. Throws to first and stretching over there is Kaufman to get the out, and BC will strand another runner. Teammates will come out to greet them as they squelch the rally. BC had an out at a home plate and strand one. It's 3-2 to two as we head to the fourth inning. Bearcat baseball right here on the Dove, 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network. If you want personalized service from an attorney who cares about you, call the law offices of Beth Brenham. When you're facing some of life's toughest challenges, you want an attorney that will be by your side. Combining compassion and experience, we offer comprehensive services for your legal needs. Call Beth Brenham Law today at 803-227-3552 or visit her website at BethBrenhamLaw.com. That's Beth Brenham law.com get on the path to results today beth brenham law sandy run exterminating is a family owned and operated company serving columbia lexington gaston newberry orangeburg aiken lugoff camden and anywhere in between being a family owned company they go the extra mile to give you the best service around call them today at 803-794-3208 to schedule your free
free termite inspection. Sandy Run Exterminating can help solve all your pest control problems, termite inspections, treatments and treatment contracts, damage repair, pest control, new construction pre-treatments, CL100 letters, and moisture control. Give them a call at 803-794-3208. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. And welcome back to KC South Carolina. Mike Higgins, Kurt Pichy here with you on the Dove 1620 and on Palmetto State Sports Network. Good game right now, 3-2 to two as we head to the top of the fourth inning and leading things off for them will be 5, 6, and 7. Jacob Muir, who had a heck of a play, play of the game so far. Ball hit out to center field by Etheridge. Got Ty Marshall out at home plate, a swing and a miss on the first pitch. Thomas, that was pitch number 50 of the game. Check swing. Check right swing. Kind of like protecting it, protecting yourself on that one. Thomas looking for a one, two, three inning here. Before tonight in four region games, BC has only played 13 innings. The first OW game was four innings, but the last three have just been three innings. No balls, two strikes right now. Thomas on the bump for the Bearcats. Looking for a one, two, three inning. Facing Muir, the center fielder. Rocks, fires, off-speed pitch, a swing and a miss. Strikeout number five in the game. Thomas is starting to settle down here. Yeah, you'd like to get a one, two, three right here. Sure would. That'll bring up third baseman Luke Bradley. He's been busy at the hot corner today, Kurt. Had a lot of balls hit to him tonight so far. He struck out back in the second. Thomas rearing to go, facing the lefty Bradley. He's got a big gap right there between right and, le- and center field. Catches the outside corner for a called strike. Yeah, sure does. Kind of got B.J. put a little bit to the left side. He can, they must think he can get around on him. Thomas, full line. Slices that foul over the third base side. They'll probably look for something off speed right here on this 0-2 pitch. Won't give him nothing to hit, though. Absolutely not. Maybe get him to try to chase one right here, Kurt. Thomas has got some velocity, though. He can try to blow it by him if he wants. Bradley back up there, ready to go. Pumps, fires off, speed, and buckled the knees on that one. You called it. Well, you got to know it's coming, 0-2. Strikeout number six on the night. That's from a lefty to a lefty. Had one in the first, one in the second, two in the third, and two this inning. Three in a row. That'll bring up Zay McPherson, the left fielder. Yeah, you're right. That's how you ended the last inning. Yep, flew out to state in the second inning. Hard That's- hit ball. Slapped out into center field. And that'll end the streak of three straight batters struck out and set down. Yeah, they've McPherson had least, with a single. Yeah, they've had at least now one runner on each of the seven, first four innings, Matt Mike. Moore. Matt Moore up to the plate. They've stranded two runners tonight, BC three. Thomas gets the sign. He'll check the runner at first. Again, just concentrate on the batter right here. Yeah. I sw- you're up Curve by ball one for run. a called strike, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to put him in a scoring position on your uh, error by you. We've had two errors on pickoff attempts. Thomas checks the runner. Gills to the plate, check, swing, called strike. Yeah, like See, just said, like that, it's 0-2, Kurt. Yeah, just concentrate on the batter. That runner don't mean anything over there unless you let him mean something. Matt Moore trying to help his own calls. Took over his pitcher from DH in the second inning. Going to miss outside trying to get him to chase something there. Say McPherson on first base after a single with two outs. Six strikeouts tonight for Hayden Thomas. Looking for number seven right here. Thomas to the plate, off-speed pitch. Stays alive. Just got a piece of it. 
<laughs> what a game this has been, the pretty much like we expected. Yep, we sure have. Slow, like you said, heavyweight fight. 3-2 ball game. Looks in, checks the runner. Runner going, check swing in the dirt, going to take second. Did he get a strikeout? He yep. did. Got a strikeout. Anyway, they'll strand a runner, and they'll face four, but get three strikeouts. And we will head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Bearcats leading this one three to two. Back with more in a moment. Bearcat baseball right here on the Dove. Insurance can help put your mind at ease especially when it comes with an agent who will take the time to understand your needs and walk you through your coverage options. If you're looking for peace of mind for your family's future, talk to Stacy Sizemore with Farm Bureau Insurance. Stacy is a longtime resident of Lexington County and has been with Farm Bureau Insurance since 2000. Stacy's children graduated from BC High School and Stacy knows what matters most to you and your family and can help you with all your insurance needs. Home, life, and auto. Stacy Sizemore's Farm Bureau Agency is located at 7501 Irmo Drive in Columbia. And to get a quote or to find out more, you can visit scfbins.com or call Stacy at 803-749-9171. That's 803-749-9171. That's Stacy Sizemore with Farm Bureau Insurance. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. Welcome back to KC South Carolina. Mike Higgins, Kurt Pichy here with you. Glad you could join us tonight. 3-2 ball game, and we were expecting this. Yep. Like a heavyweight fight. Looked like BC got the upper hand there in the first, and we're looking for a TKO. Up 3 to nothing. Ended up straining two runners on, but Dreher didn't give up. Came back in the top of the third inning to plate two runs. Left the tie and run on third. Right now, both teams have stranded three runners apiece. And we're just seeing who's going to make the next move. Yeah, I give Dreher credit. You know, they pitched their start in one inning. He didn't have it, and he didn't waste any time going to the bullpen and bringing out his next pitcher. Certainly didn't. Jackson Thomas up for the Bearcats. That might Off that up, in, the that might shallow in. center field. Muir dives. It fell in. It fell in, and a base hit for Jackson Thomas. How about it? That was trouble from the t moment it left the bat, Mike. And believe it or not, <clears throat> Kurt, that's the first leadoff guy we've got aboard in our fourth attempt. Yep. This ball was trouble from the time it left the bat. You could just tell. Got to bring up Robert McMillan. Now batting third baseman, number 34, Robert McMillan. Top of the fifth, BC JV up four to nothing over the Pillion JV. Keep up the good work, guys. Pulling on you. Pulling for you there. Yeah, we'll be calling some of y'all's names next season. Absolutely. <laughs> you might see a little bunt here, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, it runs are at a premium right now. Wouldn't hurt. McMillan, we'll see what he does right here. Ooh. Throw back to first. Ooh, close play, but able to dive back was Jackson Thomas. Morris had pretty much smooth selling since he came in back in the second inning to lead things off. Yeah, he's only faced seven batters, so. Let's see what McMillan does right here. Another quick throw. Wow, getting so close. Well, like, what makes his throw so good, Mike, he throws it hard, too. I mean, he's popping it over there pretty good. He sure is. Quick snap throw. McMillan flew out to center field his first at bat. Holds up on that one. Ball high and inside. One ball, no strikes. Nobody out. Lead off man aboard for the Bearcats. Jackson Thomas, BC leading by one. Bottom of the fourth inning. Glad you could join us here. Whether you're listening on the Dove 1620 or watching on Palmetto State Sports Network. That Rex over there manning the TV monitor, as you call it. Doing a great job, too. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to get the knockout drag out. We got a brand new hot spot and got things running smooth tonight. I'll be honest. I ate some humble pie and listened to the kid. 
<laughs> kid knew what he was talking about. I don't. I, all my kids tell me how to do it. I've been ate my humble pie. <laughs> Looks in, pumps, fires again. Works that high and inside. McMillan stays off of it. You know, my oldest daughter and son-in-law, they're my IT people at Creekside. They do all my IT stuff. <laughs> I'm, I got paper and pencil at work, so <laughs> no computer there, buddy. <laughs> Three balls, no strikes. Oh, hits him in the helmet. Wow. And Millen shakes it off. A little perturbed by that. I don't blame him. Slings his bat. I'll take his base first and second. Now it's got to ring a bell or two. Sure does. Now you could probably see a bump right here. Yeah, absolutely. Put runners at second and third. I'm thinking, um, well, let's see how they're going to roll it here. Because that would bring Tanner Staten up if now Smith able to bunt is. right here. Yeah, but make sure it's a good bunt, though. You don't want to let him get the force at third. Maybe a safety squeeze right here. We'll see what Bradley does at third. He's even with the bag. you got to be careful here. you got to – wouldn't have anybody to cover third. Steps off. Yeah, if he's playing deep, that's where I'm going with it. It's the best crowd we've had in a good long while. And we have great crowds, but, boy, they're showing up tonight. Showing bunt. Ah, Smith's not it. able to get that one. He just misses it. it, fouls it away. Well, look, when you got the two top teams in your region and, they're, and Dreer's 10 minutes across the bridge and they're playing good, yeah, their stands are full over there. Our stands are full. And I tell you, one day I'm going to get out to left field with, with, with our fans out there watching and listen. They barbecue, they grill. I, I told you we can go out there and call a game. You got Lobster there. and steak, that's, that's, that's the plan. There's your bar. And a nice bunt. Pitcher fields it more over to first. He's got safe. it. He's, He's safe. He's no, I He's thought up. the first baseman He's stepped up. off. Kaufman somehow anchored up there. But Let's see I tell what you happens. what, the umpire was right there. Not sure they'll change that, but does the job. Moves them to second and third. But it would have been great to have the bases loaded right there. Now, I think you're going to have the home on player ask for. Coach Sharpie trying to get a yep. clarification right here. Yeah, he done had about it one time, but John over here saw he had the best view over here. He was calling off, off, off the whole time. He'll just ask the home on player. He was looking. Our next step, and I'll have to get, I'll have to effort Rex in on this one, getting an iPad monitor over here. No problem. Safe. And he's safe. They'll overrule it. Base is loaded for the Bearcats. All right. That's it. You love it when they work together right there. Great job, Coach Sharpie, coming out there. Well, that's what the home run player's job is, is to look down there. So this could be a huge inning for the Bearcats. Now, Coach Hornsby going to come out and plead his case. This is one of them games you wish you had the third umpire. You we really do. We, we, we get them in the playoffs, but not the regular season. I hate that. It's almost like, hey, let's have a third, and we'll take up a donation in the stands, and the fans will pay for it, and we'll have a third umpire. This is a crucial I, I, game. I think what it is more than anything, they just have such a shortage of officials, and they got so many games. The playoffs, you have less, obviously less games, so it's not an issue, but – yeah, you certainly would love to have that third guy out there tonight, especially in a game of this importance. My coach, they're just trying to make sure the, the count is correct right now. now they, they've not overturned it. No, Ethan Smith staying there. That BC fan's starting to get real loud. Something going on with some fans with the cowbells or something. Something going on. All right, we got base loaded, no outs right here. Just Tanner State and the man for the plan right here. Now for the Bearcats. Bunt single for Ethan Smith with the bases loaded. Tanner trying to break this game wide open here. Bottom of the fourth inning, 3-2 ball game. BC clinging to this one. Yeah, big thing here, just put it in play. Bases loaded, still nobody out. Trying to chase more out of the game. Tanner's put in play both times up, and that last one was a deep center field. He hit a shot, didn't he? Well, if he can get one in the gap right now. Had a home run against LR, the line drive home run. This is with that first pitch. From our vantage point, we couldn't even tell it went over the fence. No, it looked like it hit the bottom of the fence, yeah. and then we're going to give him a double. Even Tanner didn't know it was a home run. 
One ball, no strikes, bases loaded, nobody out. Big moment for BC here. Moore looks in, gets the sign. Crowd raucous right now. Hard hit ball, but oh. right up the middle. Play at home. Bennett gets it, throws the first. He's going to be safe there. Safe on first. Ah. But got the force out at home. Great play by Moore to get the force out. Thomas is out at home, but everybody advances. McMillan goes to third, Smith to second, and Staten at first. Still just one out. That'll bring up Parker Murgo in a key moment right here. Yeah, you got to get one run home here. Got to get one. That was close to the plate. His foot came off the now plate. He had to go back and touch it. So, 11, Parker, Virgo. Tell you what, got to love State and just diving right there. And news how important it is not to get that second out. Uh, you want to get doubled up there. That would really change the complex of this inning. Parker Murgo, a single his first at bat, struck out his second. He hardly ever strikes out. Does a good job of putting the ball in play. Battling against Moore right here. Ball misses outside. Nowhere to put him. Still three to two. You want to see BC take advantage of this opportunity. You don't get many of these chances. Well, base load, no outs. You got to score at least one. Coming into this game, Bureau Pinching has only given up 13 runs in three games coming into the night. Fouls that one away, evens it up one and one. They've had three shutouts on the season. Again, only 13 runs coming into the night. BC's played at three. Bennett coming out to talk to them, make sure they're on the same page. One ball, one strike, 37 pitches for Moore. McMillan on third for BC, Smith on second, and Tanner Staten at first base. Parker Murgo at the plate for the Bearcats. Playing baseball at Newberry. Had his sign in a couple of weeks ago. Moore to the plate. Curve ball. Oh. Gonna pop that up in the infield. And Painter grabs that one, and everybody has to stay put. Boy, if Moore could get out of this, what a pitching performance that would be. Yeah, you got to. All right, Hayden, help you on calls right here. Thomas with a walk and a strikeout. Now batting for the Bearcats. And now you got to have a base ten. hit, or you either got to have a Thomas. wild pitch or something. Looks in, ready to go. Base is loaded for the Bearcats. Jury gets the out here. Their dugout will erupt, and they'll come out and greet the teammates coming off the field. Fouls that one away toward the left side. Yeah, the fans will erupt over there and everything. It'll be, yeah. Or if we get a hit, it'll be just the same it on the will. side. So it is, see how it goes here. What a battle. Hayden Thomas. Going up against Matt Moore. Matt Moore gets the sign from Bennett. Now timeout called. No balls and a strike with two outs. Had the bases loaded with nobody out. Then a ground up the middle to the pitcher. Moore through the home to get the force. And then a pop fly to the infield. Painter grabbed. Going to miss outside with that one. He evens it up one and one. BC is stranded three tonight. Drew's also stranded three. This is what counts right here. Aiden Thomas settles in. Left side of the plate. Matt Moore, the right-handed pitcher. It's the sign from Bennett. One ball, one strike. Pitch on the way. Going to miss low and inside. Two balls and a strike now. Big Thomas moment. should reach. Got Ty Marshall up next. Yeah, big moment in the game right here. Absolutely is. Now ready to go. BC fans starting to champ ball three, two, one count. Fouls that one away, evens it up, two and two. Base is loaded. Boy, you couldn't ask for a better atmosphere for a regular season region game. Two top ten teams going at it tonight. Aiden Thomas trying to battle back. Two balls, two strikes. Bases loaded going against Matt Moore. Righty lefty matchup. Thomas, couple of practice cuts. About ready to go. 
Moore checks the runners. He'll do from the stretch. 2-2. Two, two. Inside. Misses inside. Full count. They'll be running on contact right here. Running either way. Walk will score a run. Big moment here for Hayden Thomas. Boy, just love to see him get one in the gap somewhere. Right center's opened up. Moore ready to go. 3-2 count, payoff pitch coming up with the bases loaded. On the way, runners Ball going, four. ball four. Touching home, McMillan for run number four, 4-2. Four bases still loaded for Ty Marshall. And brother, does he have some pop in his bat. Got a single and an RBI and reached on an ear to the third baseman last time. Ty Marshall, another left-hander. He got one out of it so far, but they gave you that one. So now let's go get one and get a couple of our own. 4-2 ball game. Bearcats up. Three runs in the first. One here in the fourth. Morris. Hard hit ball. Out to left center field. That'll get out there. We're going to score a couple of runs here. As touching home will be Smith. And, and also Staten will play two, a 6-2 ball game. Now runners on the corner, first and third. Ty Marshall delivers. That's his second hit tonight and his third RBI. Two RBIs at that at bat. That's his third hit tonight. He's got well, – I have an E5 on the last one. Was yeah, that a hit or an error? Yeah, I gave an E5 on that one, yeah. I was at one the third baseman dropped the pop That'll up. bring up Etheridge. He's two for two tonight. And I have a – Conference of the Mound, Coach Horns will be coming out there. Not sure if they make a change right here or not, partner, but boy, the change, game changed dramatically with that swing. Oh, well, that walk right there, you know, kind of led to that one. 6-2 ball game. Got Etheridge at the plate now, 2-2. A conference on the mound, see if they make a change right here. And we said coming to the broadcast, talking with the coaches, they were going to throw everything in the kitchen sink to get this win tonight. You want to put the onus on Dreer Friday night to try to salvage the series. But you win tonight, it sets up a lot of good things. But you got to find a way to win this one tonight. Up by four, still batting here in the fourth inning. Runners on the corner, first and third. Marshall on first. Hayden Thomas on third base. Conference over. Everybody heads back to their position. And B.J. Etheridge stepping in there. Trying to keep the magic rolling here with two outs. No, they're going to change pitchers now. Number 19 is coming in. And they will. We'll tell you about the new pitcher in just a moment. We'll take a quick timeout as we hear from Game Day Turf. Back with more in just a moment. Bear Camp Baseball right here on the Dove 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network. Game Day Turf Management is a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Like their name implies, Game Day Turf Management takes pride in developing high quality game day ready turf. Keeping that turf in top condition over the long term requires timely and appropriate maintenance and care. Game Day Turf Management can customize a maintenance program to fit your field providing complete facility management or working in conjunction with your existing staff. With over 20 years of experience in athletic field services, Game Day Turf Management is your full service provider for your sports fields. They started with natural grass fields and have grown into a leading service provider specializing in synthetic turf. Game Day Turf Management is happy to meet on your turf. Give them a call today at 803-446-5341. That's 803-446-5341. 41 Game Day Turf Management a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. At Simply Southern Realty, we know that buying a home or selling a home is one of the biggest and most exciting decisions a person can make. We aim to make the process as simple as possible. Our team of local experts here at Simply Southern Realty is ready to guide you through the home buying and selling process. We are committed to fast, professional, and courteous service to help you understand and feel at ease throughout the process. Our trained and licensed agents at Simply Southern Realty specialize in the 
Greater Lexington, Columbia area real estate market and are prepared to help you every step of the way. Please be sure to visit us at our website, simplysouthernrealtysc.com. It features the most in-depth information on local homes, neighborhoods, and schools. We are dedicated to providing you with the resources you need when researching the Greater Lexington, Columbia real estate market. Please feel free to call us at Simply Southern with any questions at 803-399-8363. We're located at 528 Columbia Avenue in Lexington. Simply Southern Realty. Tonight's game is... And B.J. Etheridge facing Miller Pillow coming out of the bullpen. Junior right-hander. Throws some heat there, Colin Strike. First and third for B.C. They have played it three runs this inning up, six to two right now. Still can do some damage right here for Etheridge. He's two for two tonight. Peel gets the sign. Quick throw at first, again with two outs. Just focus on the batter right now if you're Dreer. Yeah, you don't want to love the run score on a bad, you know, wild play over there or something. I think the thinking is Marshall's going to take off right here and put two runners in scoring position. Called strike quickly, 0-2. Etheridge doesn't like it. Kind of looks incredulously, but not going to put a uh, not going to put markings with the bat. Wouldn't want to do that. Starting to see the little kids do that now in the league. Peel gets the strikeout on three pitches. Start and out. the Bearcats will strand two runners, but not before they score three. And bat around. Six to two, Bearcats lead as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Back with more in just a moment. Bearcat baseball right here on the Dove, 1620, as we hear more about Creekside Restaurant. Hi, folks. Kirk PC, PC class of 82, and owner of Creekside Restaurant, located at 711 East Main Street, Lexington, in the Old Mill. We offer a full breakfast and lunch menu, plus daily lunch specials, including pot roast on Tuesdays and Thursdays now. We are open Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. We also offer takeout and multiple delivery services for your convenience. Remember, breakfast, lunch, or brunch, the choice is yours. Zeus and Bailey's Pet Spa. We're the gentle pet pampering specialists, and we're certified dog groomers. We're open Monday through Saturday by appointment. You can call or text us at 803-543-8752. That's 803-543-8752. We're located at 1408 Charleston Highway in West Columbia. We are in the lower level of the Tropic Air Santa's Closet Building. Be sure to mention you heard about us on the Dove 1620. You can also follow us on Facebook, Zeus and Bailey's Pet Spa, the gentle pet pampering specialist. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. And welcome back to KC South Carolina. A gorgeous evening. Temperatures are starting to cool down a bit. And the Bearcats plate three runs in the bottom of the fourth inning. Much needed. And it looked like uh, for Dreer, they were going to escape that inning. But a big walk on Hayden Thomas. And then Ty Marshall delivers with a two RBI single, Kurt. Yeah, and this is what they call a shutdown inning right here. Let's see, we can't get three up, three down, and kind of squelch any hope they got. Aiden Thomas with five strikeouts the last two innings. Ready to go. First pitch on the way. Ain't going to miss ball one. Thanks so much for joining us here this evening. Rares back and fires right down Broadway for a strike. Evens it up. One ball, one strike. Tank Bennett to lead things off for them at the number nine spot. Top of the lineup coming up. You got Caleb Gibson coming up next with two hits tonight, a single and a double, and an RBI. So to get this leadoff man called strike, another hard fastball right there by Hayden Thomas. Yeah, he struck out the last time looking at the last two pitches he saw. So 
Rocks, fires, hard hit ball to shortstop, takes a bounce, Gibbs over to first, and Murgo tagged him, did he? Yep. He did indeed. Great play by Parker Murgo. Had to jump off the bag, caught it on the line, and a quick tag applied and out number one. And, boy, it was a little too exciting for me, but we'll take yep. it. One of, the, one of the rare time you see Gibbs make a not a good throw. Absolutely. Murgo able to make the nice grab and applies the tag for the out. That'll bring up Caleb Gibson, two for two tonight. Dangerous hitter, another reason you're glad nobody's on base right now. Yeah, he's scorched it twice. Mason Thomas for the third time tonight. Maybe the third time's a charm for Hayden. Pitch count settled down for Hayden. Just 66 pitches at last pitch number 67. Going to miss on that one low and inside. 1-0. and 6-2 ball game. Top of the fifth inning here from Brooklyn Casey High School. As we call it now, the Brook. No softball game. Well, yeah, we do have a softball game. Or is it practice tonight? Looks like practice, practice tonight. Yeah. Thought we had a game going on. Trying to make the playoffs again this year. Fastball in and just going to miss with that one. 3-0. and Yeah, that must have been a little bit low. Would think Gibson would have something to hit here. Probably taking all day. You need base runners down by four right now. Pitch on the way. Yep. Right down Broadway with that one. 3-1. and one. Micah Elliott on deck. Builder's Choice, his first at bat, and reached on an E5 and an RBI last time he was at the plate. Three balls, one strike, one out. Gibson stands in there, right side of the plate. Left-hander, flamethrower, Thomas, curveball, got him on the outside corner. Count full, battles back from a 3-0 count. See if he can complete the comeback and get the strikeout right here. Yeah, you got to think Gibson was looking fastball that time. Pumps, fires, got him. got him! He knew it. Sets him down on a strikeout right there, and my goodness, got things rolling right now. What a recovery being down 3-0. Come back with that strikeout, Mike. Sure Big. did. He set down a guy who's been two for two tonight. Had to bring up Micah Elliott for them, their second baseman. Fielder's choice in the first and reached on an error to the third baseman. Had an RBI back in the third. Love to get a 1-2-3 in in here. Misses upstairs. Had only a one, one, two, three in it. That was not a traditional one back in the second as Muir led off with a single but caught, got caught in a rundown. Called strike there, evens it up. One ball, one strike. <laughs> Thomas motoring down here this inning. Looking to set him down in order. One ball, one strike, curveball. He fouls that away down the third base side. Gets out of play. Love to get all seven innings of this game in with Thomas. Save your entire bullpen, and you would have B.J. Etheridge for Friday as well. One ball, two strikes with two outs. Thomas adjusting the sleeves. Looking for another punch out right here. Skies that one up. Shallow left field, Gibbs ranging over behind third and grabs it. A one, two, three inning, down go the Blue Devils. And we'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning, 6-2 Bearcats lead. Back with more right here on the Dove 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network. Insurance can help put your mind at ease, especially when it comes with an agent who will take the time to understand your needs and walk you through your coverage options. If you're looking for peace of mind for your family's future, talk to Stacy Sizemore with Farm Bureau Insurance. Stacy is a longtime resident of Lexington County and has been with Farm Bureau Insurance since 2000. Stacy's children graduated from BC High School, and Stacy knows what matters most to you and your family and can help you with all all your insurance needs, home, life, and auto. Stacy Sizemore's Farm Bureau Agency is located at 7501 Irmo Drive in Columbia. And to get a quote or to find out more, you can visit scfbins.com or call Stacy at 803-749-9171. That's 803-749-9171. That's Stacy Sizemore with Farm Bureau Insurance. 
Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. Seems like yesterday. And hey, welcome back to KC South Carolina here at the Brook. Mike Higgins, Kurt Pichy here with you. Bearcats leading this one 6-2. to two. And up to the plate, Gibbs leads off for the Bearcats. A roper just past the third baseman and gets into left field and a single for Gibbs to get things started here in the fifth inning for the Bearcats. Yeah, exactly what we needed last inning. Mike called it a shutdown inning, came out, got three outs, and boom, here we right back up the bat again. Picking up where we left off. Miller Pill, the third pitcher of the night for Dreer. They led off with Nolan Cook. He went an inning, and then Matt Moore came in and pitched uh, several good innings. Second, third were smooth, got in trouble there in the uh, fourth inning, though. Bill gets the sign, pumps, fires. Going to miss a little high with that one as he faces Jackson Thomas. And then, you know, you're on a different day of the week for the pitching staff, so come Friday night, you know, might not get rest on a couple of these guys. So, Fun fact about Jackson, he absolutely loves Cheese Whiz. I'm not a big fan, but Jackson is. <laughs> that is one of his favorite little treats. He said if he can't be a Major League Baseball player, he'd like to one day run his dad Lee's company. That's very admirable. Gill gets the sign. Careful what you ask for. <laughs> Thomas awaits <laughs> and dribbles it back. I want him on a restaurant for years, and yeah, here I am. So be careful what you ask for, folks. <laughs> Own your own business. Uh, yes, It'll be fun, they yeah, say. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, who gave me that idea? <laughs> uh. Only in America. One ball, one strike. Runner aboard first. Gibbs for the Bearcats. Jackson Thomas at the plate awaits the pitch from Peel. Bunts. A beauty. It dies. Nobody to cover. And we're all safe. First and second for the Bearcats. Charging in from first was Kaufman. And uh, nobody was there to cover yep. first base. I guess they were looking for Elliott over there. Well, the runner was going, which probably caused the second baseman maybe to go cover the bag. And then the pitcher and the first baseman come down on the bunt. Nobody was at first base, so beautiful. And good. Well executed. That ball, I don't know if it was all the rain that we got, but it just looked like it was going to roll right to peel, but just absolutely died. I think Gibbs might have a cramp out there. Yeah, trying to work that out. May very well. Bearcats got something brewing here in the fifth, too, Kurt. Yep. Bottom of the fifth inning, six to two Bearcats. Trying to put this one out of reach. Sure could use some insurance runs right here. No lead safe again. Battling Drew averaging 12 runs a game of the season. And make the mistake, they're a very good baseball team. Had some impressive wins this year. They've come against preseason top 10 team Gilbert in the region series opener. The Blue Devils won game one at home, five to one. A great play game, but then absolutely KO'd the Indians at their place. 16 to nothing. That's unheard of. They yeah. also beat third ranked to a great collegiate last Monday, 15 to nine. So they're a good ball club. Yeah, but they're you know they're facing one of the best pitchers in the Midlands tonight with Hayden Thomas. So um, makes a difference. Sure does. Hayden Thomas initially was offered a scholarship by Arkansas a couple of seasons ago. Got injured. And now waiting for some other schools to come back in the pitcher. And I don't have any doubt with the season he's having that that's going to happen. Bill pumps, fires, and off-speed pitch going to miss there. Yeah, we've got a school right across the river right there that's playing pretty good baseball right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Would love to have him there. He grew up a Gamecock fan. Well, not only that, you know, BC sent plenty of players to South Carolina. We sure all have. That. One of the greatest of all time, Kip Baltonite. Kip Baltonite, Coach uh, Whetstone, he was with us last yep. year's pitching coach. Fastball misses upstairs and high. A couple guys from back in our day, Keith Killian, Harvey Heisey. Oh, yeah. You know, so, yeah, a lot of guys we sent over there. Two balls, no strikes. First and second for the Bearcats, nobody out. Pill checks the runner from the stretch. Catches the strike zone. Looked a little low, but going to say caught the outside corner. No outs right here. You like to at least get these guys in scoring position. McMillan hit by a pitch right in the helmet. He plunked him last inning. 
That was when Moore was in the game. Bunt, but Bunt's it foul. Two and two, Bunt off the table now. Good thought right there. Yeah, like I say, you want to get both these guys in scoring position. McMillan in a senior season, transferred from Northside Christian Academy where he played for his father, Bob. Good ball player. Glad to have him here for his senior season. Right-handed hitter. Chance to drive in a couple of runs right here. Two balls, two strikes for Pill. McMillan trying to put one in play here with runners on first and second with nobody out. Curveball. Going to lace that out to right field. Shallow ground. But staying in ter fair territory, grabbed by Gibson for the out. And everybody stays put at first and second. It's hung up just a little too long that time. Ethan Smith up to bat with an out. Had a blunt single leg one out, and that was a big one. Loaded the bases for BC, who led off the inning last inning with a Jackson Thomas single, a Robert McMillan hit by pitch, and that loaded the bases. They would love to get out of this with a four-run deficit right now. Doesn't want to give the Bearcats any more. Smith, reserve catcher, looks at a fastball sell high, 1-0. Caught the whole tournament preseason in Lexington, all four of those games, did a remarkable job. Of course, we saw him extensively in the game against Oceanside Collegiate when Ty Marshall got hurt in that first inning. Good to know you got a good backup. This is outside with that one, 2-0. Yeah, you're right, Mike. you got to have a good backup every position, but catching is key. Like they say, he's the only guy that can see the whole field. Hard of the lineup due up next. Top of the lineup with Tanner Staten on deck. Ethan Smith, 2-0 count. Might take this pitch from Pill. Puts it in play. A little dribbler charging in. Third baseman whips it over to first in plenty of time. Good play by Bradley charging in. Fires over to Kaufman for the out. Everybody moves up 90 feet, second and third now for the Bearcats. Gibbs moves to third. Thomas over to second, but that will give two outs now. The two out here here by Tanner. Score two, especially with the speed on the bases. So. Fielder, number five, Tanner Staten. Tanner Staten do right here. Second and third. Two runs would be huge right here. Gets anything in the outfield, think that would it could score two runs here. They're going on contact with two outs. This is on that pitch outside. Yeah, he likes the first pitch. You put anywhere near to play, he's swinging. <laughs> and I think Bennett thinks they might have been crossed up on that call. He comes out, going to talk to Pill, make sure they're on the same page. One ball, no strike. Second, third for the Bearcats. Here in the bottom of the fifth, it's Bearcats leading this one 6-2 to two over the eighth-ranked Drew Blue Devils. Teams battling for supremacy in Region 5. Two teams again will meet Friday at Memorial Stadium. That game been moved to 7-15. Hill gets the sign, pumps, fires, fastball. Going to miss upstairs. Two balls, no strikes. Second, third for the Bearcats. Parker Murgo on deck if Staten should reach or drive a couple of runs in here. Yeah, Murgo's three for three, so. Staten awaits the pitch. What a cut on that one. Couldn't catch up with it. Swinging for the fences on that one. He's got one home run on the season, two and one. Staten taps the play to be playing quarterback at Elon next year, leaving on June the 5th. Talk about right after graduation, just a couple of days to enjoy life. Oh, called strike. Staten gives a little stare to the umpire. That makes it two and two. Looked like he missed on that one. Anytime you follow that ball all the way to the catcher's mitt, the umpire, he's usually going <laughs> to ring you up. Just, I mean, he didn't do it on purpose, but. Two balls, two strikes now. Got to protect the plate. Staten awaits the pitch. Hit him. Hit him. He'll take the base there. Everything's okay. Shakes it off and will head to first. Now the base is loaded again for the Bearcats. Got to bring up Parker Murgo. Now batting, first baseman, number 11, Parker Murgo. I've got him single into the first, a strikeout in the second, and then pop up to the shortstop back in the fourth. Yep. So he's one for three on the night. 
He is absolutely due right here. Trying to give a big cushion for the Bearcats here in the latter part of the game. Bottom of the fifth, bases loaded. 6-2, Bearcats lead by four, going to miss outside. Nowhere to put Parker. Got Hayden Thomas on deck. Six-two ball game. Mike Higgins, Kirk Pichy here with the Bearcats with the lead. Pill trying to work out of the jam. Murgo swinging for the fences there. Can't catch up with it. Swinging a miss. Strike one. One ball, one strike. Bases are loaded for BC. You got Gibbs on third. Thomas on second. And Tanner Staten at first after he got plucked by a pitch. Murgo awaits the pitch from Pill. Pill set at the chest. To the plate, blunt down the third base side, charging in, plays got it home, tag safe, tag. Got, oh. safe. No, he didn't have a tag, all he had to do was. All he had to do was touch the plate. And they're going to come out and argue the call. Coach Hornsby didn't like it. That was a bang, bang play. I'm not sure how well you saw it, Kurt. It was bang, bang. I was looking for him to tag, but he didn't have to tag because bases were low, and that would have been the force. Nice bunt, though. Margo will get the. RBI on that one. And I bring up Hayden Thomas. Makes it a 7-2 ball game. Coach Hornsby clearly didn't like that. That was a close play. I'll have to go back and re-watch this one. That was awful close. Your eyes What's the verdict, the, guys? They said safe. Both he them, was, they, yeah. they both said safe. And they're looking into a camera, so they're right on it. And the umpire's right there on top of that play. And that's one of the easiest calls for him to make. He's right there. So... 7-2 ball game. And you forget he didn't have to make the tag, so that made the play a little closer. Base is loaded. Aiden Thomas helping his own calls right here. Ball going to miss upstairs. He's got a walk, a strike, two walks and a strikeout score to run. Pitching another gem, so help Tom himself Marshall right here. Marshall on deck with two hits, has reached base three times. Aiden Thomas would love to clear the bases with one swing right here. Pill looks in for the sign, pumps, fires, couldn't catch up with the high fastball. It evens it up at one and one. Seven two ball game. Bearcats jumped on top, 3 0. Then in the third inning, Dreer answered back with two runs of its own. And since then, it's been all BC. Three runs last inning in the fourth, and one run here in the fifth. That's where we're at, seven to two. It's a piece of that. Two strikes now. One ball, two strikes. Jackson Thomas on third. Tanner Staten on second. Parker Murgo at first for the Bearcats. Aiden Thomas at the plate. 0 for 1 tonight. Starting pitcher. He'd love that. A couple more runs. Awaits the pitch by Peel. Curve ball. Slices that foul. Going to hook out a play past third base up towards the bullpen. Gets past the bullpen. One ball, two strikes. Running on contact with two outs. Miller Pill gets the sign from Tank Bennett. Tank. <laughs> We're in all black tonight with the white numbers. Thomas fouls that one away, jerks that over the third base dugout. Got a sea of targets to hit out there with all the cars. One ball, two strikes with two outs. Still trying to settle down. Would love to get out of this inning, only surrendering one run. Pitch on the way. Another Thomas ball. staying alive. Good at bat for him. 7 2 ball game. Mike Hake gets Kurt Peach here with the Bearcats with the lead, ranked number two. Jur coming into the game tonight, ranked number eight. They have not tasted defeat this season. Now Bennett will come back out. One ball, two strikes with two out. Bases loaded for the Bearcats. Bottom of the fifth inning. And it heads back to home plate. Three, four, and five do up next inning for Dreer. Kaufman will lead off, and you got Painter and Muir after that. One ball, two strikes with two outs. Bases loaded for Hayden Thomas. Starting pitcher still on the mound for the Bearcats. Would love to add some runs and only need six more outs for BC. Thomas awaiting the pitch. One, two, coming up from Miller Pill. On the way. Lofts it up, left field. 
And going to hook out of play. It's over the foul fence out in left field. Loves that left field line. <laughs> sure does. And again, running on contact. Anything out in the outfield is going to score two runs right here. Would well, love to see Hayden connect with this one, wouldn't you? That big gap right there in right center. Huge. If he could just pull one a little bit. Is that a strikeout? No, just misses outside. Aiden able to lay off that one, show some discipline. That was a close pitch. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Trying to open up this game. Bearcats up by five. They could put it out of reach with a big inning right here. Played it one so far, but the base is loaded two outs. Number three hitter Thomas fouls away. What in it bat by Aiden Thomas. Just staying alive pitch after pitch. He's had about ten pitches on this at bat. Something like that. That's four, yeah, at least eight. Miller Pill after that pitch up to 32. Pit. 32. Pit. <coughs> 32 pitches, yeah. <coughs> Got a 2 2 count right here. Thomas awaits. Ground ball, first base. First base should have it. Kaufman <coughs> grabs it for the out. We'll take a timeout back with more in just a moment. Bearcat baseball right here on the Dove. Game Day Turf Management is a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Like their name implies, Game Day Turf Management takes pride in developing high quality game day ready turf. Keeping that turf in top condition over the long term requires timely and appropriate maintenance and care. Game Day Turf Management can customize a maintenance program to fit your field providing complete facility management or working in conjunction with your existing staff. With over 20 years of experience in athletic field services, Game Day Turf Management is your full service provider for your sports fields. They started with natural grass fields and have grown into a leading service provider specializing in synthetic turf. Game Day Turf Management is happy to meet on your turf. Give them a call today at 803-446-5341. That's 803-446-5341. 41 Game Day Turf Management, a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit Simply Southern Realty SC.com. Welcome back to KC South Carolina. Mike Higgins, Kurt Pesci. BC with one run that last inning in the bottom of the fifth. Had three hits, but stranded the bases loaded again, Kurt. And we left a lot of runners on base and really could have broke that game open. Still up by five, but, man, you'd love yep. to have a couple more runs. Yeah, we could have got a five spot right there. Five more runs, we could have went home. Ah, that's true. I didn't even think about yeah. that. But you know what? We're still six outs away in the way of – you know, Hayden's pitching. Just go out. Now you just tell him, look, no strikes. Don't waste your pitches. Really don't even – if we get a runner aboard, don't even really have to worry about him. Just concentrate yep. on the batter. Three, four, and five do up for them. Sheldon Kaufman, who made the last out of the last inning, the first baseman, do up here to start the inning. He tired eight of the last nine batters he's faced, so he's in rhythm. He is definitely in a groove. See if he can keep it going right here. I mean, you know Dreer's going to be trying to swing and hit the ball. They've got to get some base runners, so. Bearcats with an 18-game region winning streak. Haven't lost since April 22nd, 2021. That was against Gilbert here at home, 4-1. to one. Try to keep that streak alive. Put it up to 19 after tonight. Six more outs to go. Kaufman awaits the pitch, trying to paint that corner and just misses outside, 1-0. Bearcat fans have been tremendous here tonight, giving a home field advantage for sure. Kaufman awaits the pitch and going to miss way outside on that one. Well, you know, it's not too often even in region play and that you get this kind of competition, you know, to bring out the best in everybody. Ooh, runs that inside 3-0. and oh. They got the leadoff man aboard the first three innings, but the last three innings I had a – Strike out in the fourth inning and a ground out to short in the fifth inning. Top of the sixth inning, 
Right down Broadway with that one, three and one. He battled yep. back earlier with a 3 0 count in. Yep. The last inning in the fifth, they were going in and they didn't get anybody on base. Even the fourth, then they got a runner on. Went the lead off, but they got one on. Right? Yeah. Swing and a miss, strike two. Trying to get another strikeout. Come back from a 3 0, 3 0 count again. This is would be strikeout number nine if he can complete it. Kaufman steps out, gets timeout. It's been a fun game here. 7-2 Bearcats lead, top of the sixth inning. Pumps, fires, sharply hit. First base side and foul. Counts full, three and two. Marshall will come out, have a quick conference with Hayden. Hayden with five innings pitch has given up four hits, two runs. One of those runs earned eight strikeouts and one walk tonight. Can't ask for a better performance so far. Thomas gets the sign, 3-2 on Kaufman. Rocks back, fires. Soft roller over to the Gibbs, fires across his body, scooped nope. up by Murgo, can't get it. Murgo... Made a great effort over there, but couldn't quite scoop that in. Well, a couple of the ground balls they've hit tonight. They've been slow getting out to the out to the infielders, you know, so it's hard to make that bang bang throw when the ball gets there kind of slow. That'll bring up shortstop Jack Painter. Ground out to first in the first inning and struck out back in the third. It's only his third at bat of the night. He is the proverbial straw that stirs the drink for the Blue Devil attack. Ball misses low for Thomas. Love to get one more in and out of Hayden. Peers down. Right now that was pitch number 84. Thomas checks the runner at first. Dishes to the plate. Breaking ball. Called strike. One and one. Glad you could join us tonight. Top 10 matchup here in 3A in Region 5. Thomas will deal from the stretch. Checks the runner. Facing Painter, whips a fastball, going to miss outside. He evens it up. Well, it makes it two and one now. Painter looking for his first hit of the evening. Thomas looking for strikeout number nine. Take a double play ball right here. Swing and a miss, strike two. Or, or strikeout. Either one will take them. With a five-run lead, you, just, you want outs. Yeah, you do, and you want them quick. Two balls, two strikes. Runner aboard first, nobody out. Aiden Thomas matching up with Jack Painter, the shortstop, one of their leaders. Going to miss low. Marshall tries to get the ball, throws down. I didn't think he had a shot and just going to come up oh. short, but, man, he whipped that down to second. And the base runner almost slid past the base. That's why we almost got him. Kaufman gets the stolen base. Marshall, ball got away from him, had trouble locating it. But then fired a rocket down to second and almost got Kaufman. Just came up a little short, and I got a runner in scoring position. They're down by five. They just want to have a little, little bit of a run right here, get something going. Thomas pumps, fires, misses outside, and drawing the walk will be Painter. First time he's reached tonight. First he's still, and second for Muir. He's still got the velocity. He's got to get Missing his control. location. Yeah, still got velocity. Bet the canteen's doing brisk business tonight. Hmm. We need to get some French fries in there. Coming out and have a pitcher's conference. Not sure if you make the change right here or not. Nah. No, nah, you get a five run lead. Yeah, he's yeah, let him let him go a little bit longer here. No real danger right now. It is. Jacob, you're coming to the plate. Well, Singled back in the second, struck out in the fourth. Yeah, you got to decide, you know, hey, do we want to try to get the lead runner if we get a chance, or do we want to kind of, you know, just get their out at second or first? So a lot of, lot of discussion going on out there. Just got a final from the JV. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Lewis Marshall gave me an update. BC wins at 7-2 over Pillion. So there's your update there. Take another W. Now batting for the Blue Devils. Center fielder, number nine, Jacob Muir. Now Muir trying to deliver for the Blue Devils. They're looking for the bunt. Murgo's in. McMillan's in at third. Single and a strikeout. 
coming back out there. Another conference. Going to have to make the change here. Something's going on. We're going to make some changes here. We'll see who we bring in. And we'll give you that information as we make a pitching change. But we'll give you the final numbers on Hayden as well. But he leaves the game with a 7-2 lead. We'll take a quick timeout. Back with more in just a moment. Bearcat Baseball right here on the Dove 1620. Be sure to check out bestmetronews.com. It's your ultra-local news source. To find out what's going on in Casey, West Columbia, and Springdale, along with the absolute best coverage of Lexington 2 schools, be sure to check out westmetronews.com, your ultra-local news source. You can also follow us on social media at Facebook and Twitter. For all of your latest local breaking news, visit westmetronews.com. Zeus and Bailey's Pet Spa. We're the gentle pet pampering specialists and we're certified dog groomers. We're open Monday through Saturday by appointment. You can call or text us at 803-543-8752. That's 803-543-8752. We're located at 1408 Charleston Highway in West Columbia. We are in the lower level of the Tropic Air Santa's Closet Building. Be sure to mention you heard about us on the Dove 1620. You can also follow us on Facebook. Zeus and Bailey's Pet Spa, the gentle pet pampering specialist. List. Attention Bearcat fans, here's your chance to help the student athletes of Brooklyn Casey High School by becoming a member of the Bearcat Club. Membership is open to everyone and your gifts help purchase items that our sports team couldn't otherwise afford. You can join the Bearcat Club this season for as little as $25. There are five different membership levels with terrific benefits. Go to our website at bchighbearcats.com and download a membership form. The Bearcat Club is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and all gifts are tax deductible. Go Bearcats! And enter the Sandman, Brogan Sox to check in the game right now, trying to shut the door in the drill. Blue Devils, 7-2 ball game. BC with the lead, runners on first and second. First pitch, going to send that out to right field. Looks like he caught it. Nice he did job. catch it. Nice Hayden. little shoestring. That's Hayden Thomas out and right. Wow. Goes from the mound and makes a play immediately. My goodness. Looking at Brogan Sox numbers against Chapin last week. Three and two-thirds innings, gave up no hits, no runs, 44 pitches, 30 of those were strikes, had four strikeouts and no walks, and he just comes in and gets the job done. Yep. He's not going to overpower you, but he has got the best curveball I've seen. Got to bring up Luke Bradley. Not sure why. Something must have been going on with Hayden or something because they came out and then went back in and came right back out. So yeah. I'd like to know what that was all about. Hopefully everything's okay with him, but make a heck of a play out in right field. Bradley at the plate, called strike, evens it up, one and one with one out, first and second. Remember, folks, if you're watching, this is a true freshman. <laughs> and he is not shy about anything out on that mound, I promise you. He is out there fearless. He didn't care the situation. He wants the ball. Trying to pick up the – over there, chopper over to McKinshock. Got to throw over to first. Does. Margo stretches to get the second out. Everybody advances, second and third. Kaufman will head to third and Painter over to second. But just need one more out to get out of this inning. Yeah, with well, Tanner Staten is at second base now, Mike. Moved him to second. And looking at the final numbers for Hayden Thomas, five innings pitch, four hits, two runs. One of those earned two walks and eight strikeouts. So great work by Hayden. Well, look, last time Brogan Sox came in, base loaded and one out. Didn't give up anything. Now he's got first and second and no outs. He's got the first two guys out. So he's like he, he's like your closer, I guess. <laughs> Appears to be his role right now for sure. Yep. Batting, left fielder number four, Zay McPherson. And Etheridge set to get the start on Friday. McPherson up. He singled last time. That's back in the fourth inning. Chance to drive some runs in right here. That should be the third out. And sends it out. Left field Got and him. ranging over Jackson Thomas for the third and final out. 
Getting the last two outs, Hayden Thomas in right, and his brother Jackson out in left, and that'll end that threat. They'll strand two runners, and we'll head to the bottom of the six-inning, 7-2 Bearcats lead. Back with more in just a moment right here on the Dove 1620 and Palmetto State Sports Network. Insurance can help put your mind at ease, especially when it comes with an agent who will take the time to understand your needs and walk you through your coverage options. If you're looking for peace of mind for your family's future, talk to Stacy Sizemore with Farm Bureau Insurance. Stacy is a longtime resident of Lexington County and has been with Farm Bureau Insurance since 2000. Stacy's children graduated from BC High School, and Stacy knows what matters most to you and your family and can help you with all your insurance needs. Home, life, and auto. Stacy Sizemore's Farm Bureau Agency is located at 7501 Irmo Drive in Columbia and to get a quote or to find out more you can visit scfbins.com or call Stacy at 803-749-9171 that's 803-749-9171 that's Stacy Sizemore with Farm Bureau Insurance Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit SimplySouthernRealtySC.com. Seems like yesterday. And welcome back to Casey, South Carolina. Mike Higgins, Kurt Peachy here with you from Brooklyn Casey High School. Tom Marshall set to lead off the inning here. Bearcats up by five, seven to two. Bottom of the sixth inning. Ty, a smart man, can solve a Rubik's Cube. Uh, I got one in 1983 for Christmas. You know how your parents let you open one for Christmas Eve? That was my present. I never solved it. I eventually peeled the stickers off and cheated. <laughs> Marshall, get a piece of that foul, ranging over... Is Bradley at third going to watch that sell out of play? And if he can't make it to the major leagues, he wants to be a pilot one day. We'll get him a Clemson Tiger Rubik's Cube and see what we can <laughs> put Carolina on one side and Clemson on the other. We'll see what we can Tell do. you what, uh, baseball players make good pilots. Ted Williams, probably one of the greatest hitters ever, was a fighter pilot in both World War II and the Korean War. And arguably the best hitter of all time. He had great hand-eye coordination. He could actually say when the ball came off the pitcher's hand, he could actually see the seam, pick it up. That's some great eyesight. <laughs> I barely picked the ball up out of the pitcher's hand. Pumps fires. Going to miss outside with that one. Good eye by Marshall. Yeah, that was last inning right there was a backbreaker for Dreer. Mike, first and second, no outs. Change the pitcher, and then Sox comes in and does it again. Yeah, and if you're them, if you just get two runs, it makes it a, a could be a very interesting last inning. Pumps, fires, and boy, just misses with that one. Well, the thing you want is, you know, you like at least got one. That way, base is loaded, and a guy at the plate at least could tie it. So, absolutely. Three two count. Runs that one inside. Ooh. Good discipline by Marshall. Close pitch, lays off it, and draws the walk. Been on base all four times tonight. Sure has. What a weapon he's been for us this year. And the whole time he's been at BC. That bring up B.J. Etheridge. He struck out his last at bat. He's got two singles as well. He's two for three tonight. Had a good night as well. Going to be a, I don't think, a very tough decision for player of the game. But Kurt will name that. Brought to you by Game Day Turf Management. That will be after next inning. Hopefully we'll get three up, three down. Pill looks in. Pumps, fires, fouled straight back. And at a little over two hours tonight, two hours and eight minutes. Mike Higgins, Kurt Pichy here with you. Thanks for joining us here on the Dove 1620. If you're watching on YouTube, Palmetto State Sports Network, you can look at all of our old games we've got up as well. I think Friday night we were home before 8 o'clock. We were. <laughs> Misses inside. And it just never, you never know in high school. Get the steal on a pass ball, Tom Marshall at second base. You don't. Even like this, it's been a pretty much well-played game, good pitching. You know, we've had a couple long innings because we've got three in, you know, three in the first, you know, three in the fifth. But, like I said, just never know. <laughs> Bill looks in for the side for Bennett. Etheridge, one-one one count. Showing bunt, squares around. Pulls his bat back. Called it a ball, two-and-one. 
On deck for the Bearcats, Jordan Gibbs singled his last at bat and got on base with a walk in the first inning. Ground out to Bradley at third base. When is that bat in the third inning? Etheridge again showing bunt on a 2-1 count. See if he goes by with it. Does. Right up the bunt. And thrown Safe. and missed. Safe. And thinking about rounding third was Marshall. Lays it down for a hit. I think you roll that a hit, don't you? Uh, That's uh, close, or is it an E, E3? I think it's E3 for me. He had it in his glove. Yeah. Wasn't a great throw, but he still had it in his glove. Had to bring up Jordan Gibbs, singled last time. Might be another pitching change here. Coach Horn's be coming out. Yep. See if he gives the ball up. He does indeed be another pitching change for Dreer. And looks like uh, they are going to be bringing out – now, they're making a change out in the field. We'll have to see who they bring out. Are they bringing Caleb Gibson out in the field? But we'll give you all the changes coming up in just a minute. We'll take a quick timeout back with more as we hear from Simply Southern. At Simply Southern Realty, we know that buying a home or selling a home is one of the biggest and most exciting decisions a person can make. We aim to make the process as simple as possible. Our team of local experts here at Simply Southern Realty is ready to guide you through the home buying and selling process. We are committed to fast, professional, and courteous service to help you understand and feel at ease throughout the process. Our trained and licensed agents at Simply Southern Realty specialize in the greater Lexington and Columbia area real estate market and are prepared to help you every step of the way. Please be sure to visit us at our website, simplysouthernrealtysc.com. It features the most in-depth information on local homes, neighborhoods, and schools. We are dedicated to providing you with the resources you need when researching the greater Lexington and Columbia real estate market. Please feel free to call us at Simply Southern with any questions at 803-399-8363. We're located at 528 Columbia Avenue in Lexington. Simply Southern Realty. Be sure to check out bestmetronews.com. It's your ultra-local news source. To find out what's going on in Casey, West Columbia, and Springdale, along with the absolute best coverage of Lexington 2 schools, be sure to check out westmetronews.com, your ultra-local news source. You can also follow us on social media at Facebook and Twitter. For all of your latest local breaking news, visit westmetronews.com. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. Welcome back to Brooklyn Casey High School. Mike Hagan's Kurt Pichy here with you. Glad you could join us. Bearcats lead this one 7-2. New pitch from the game moving out from center field is Jacob Muir. And we'll have uh, Earl come out to center field. Let's see Gibson out and right. McPherson still out and left. The infield looks the same. Bradley at third. Painter at short. We've got Elliott over at second. And Kaufman at first base still behind the plate, uh, plate is Tank Bennett. This is a submarine pitcher that Coach Murger was telling us about the other night. Tell you, when you think submarine pitcher, you think of a Dan Quisenberry, a Gene Garber. Can't call me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, another one. With the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pitch on the way. That's, boy, that's a wicked pitch. Yeah, he throws a little curve with it, too. So he doesn't come all the way under. He gets right here, and then you kind of watch him, watch his hand, and he can, can control where it's coming. He doesn't go quite all the way submarine. Muir looks in, checks the runner, fakes the throws. Everybody scatters back. Marshall over at third base. Etheridge at first for the Bearcats. Could see Etheridge running right here, especially with a pitching style like that lends itself to it. He takes off running. Little swerve pitch, going to miss with that one. Two and one, and Etheridge takes off for second. Second, third for the Bearcats. Gibbs lofts one to the outfield. Could add two more runs for BC here. BC up by five. Bottom of the sixth inning over the number eight team in the state, the Drew Blue Devils. They were six and oh coming into the play tonight in region. That's not great. Mm -hmm. That curveball falls off the table. That's called 
Tell you what, a crazy looking pitch to try to hit if you're Jordan yeah, Gibbs. It's coming from down below, then it's coming across. And you and don't you don't up. ever see this, Kurt. Nope. Hard up the middle, painter ranging over. Throws the first, stretching his Kaufman. That'll score the run. Safe at second, out at first, and got the run home. So Marshall scores. A lot going on on that play. <laughs> Etheridge safe, and they'll call Gibbs out at first. You, you got it now? So yep. that gives them an out with a runner on second, and we'll play another run. 8-2 Bearcat lead. Now batting, left fielder, number 33, Jackson Thomas. Jackson Thomas coming back up. His favorite memory is uh, Bearcat. Was there a 5-4 win in eight innings against Buford when he was an eighth grader? That was a great win. Aubrey Richardson got the start for BC. He was just a sophomore that year, I believe. Swing and a miss by Thomas. That was in this group of seniors now were eighth graders. We had a lot of them up that year. And, again, they got cheated out of their freshman year by COVID. Only got, what, seven games into that season? Yeah, the ones I feel for in that season were the seniors. Absolutely. That was the ones because we had a couple guys. Kissinger especially yeah, yeah. was due for a great year, was our ace. I think it was already 2-0 and on the season and yep. had a good start. I think we were, what, 7-1 and to start that season. Yep. yep, like I said, that was the ones I felt bad for, the seniors. They couldn't get any time back. No balls, two strikes. Pop Strikes that field. out to left field. Ranging over McPherson. And he'll grab it for out number one. Unlike college where everybody got an extra year. Everybody got an extra year if they wanted it. Now batting for the Bearcats, third baseman, number 34, Robert McVillan. And the only people you've got that want to stay an extra year at high school is involuntary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ones that can't pass the grade or they want to dress out for PE or I something. I had no desire to have a fifth year of eligibility. <laughs> right, not in high school. <laughs> Submarine pitch right up the middle, call. And that'll end the inning. Bearcats will strand another runner, but we do add a run. Eight to two, Bearcats three outs away from getting the win against the number eight team. Back with more in a moment. Bearcat baseball right here on the Dove, 1620. Game Day Turf Management is a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Like their name implies, Game Day Turf Management takes pride in developing high quality game day ready turf. Keeping that turf in top condition over the long term requires timely and appropriate maintenance and care. Game Day Turf Management can customize a maintenance program to fit your field providing complete facility management or working in conjunction with your existing staff. With over 20 years of experience in athletic field services, Game Day Turf Management is your full service provider for your sports fields. They started with natural grass fields and have grown into a leading service provider specializing in synthetic turf. Game Day Turf Management is happy to meet on your turf. Give them a call today at 803-446-5341. That's 803-446-5341. 41 Game Day Turf Management, a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit Simply Southern Realty SC.com. That song by Led Zeppelin, I've been mispronouncing it for years. I, I've said anything from Dyer Maker or whatever. It's actually pronounced Jamaica. It's the Jamaican spelling for Jamaica. So how about that? You learn, The more you know, right? Yep. Three more outs for the Bearcats. Broken Sox coming back out there. Would love three quick outs right here. 8-2 Bearcats lead. Rocks, fires. Going to miss low with that first pitch. Yeah, you're right. Three, you like to get three out and get out of here. Bearcats trying to stretch that region streak to 19 games dating back to April the 22nd, 2021. That was the last time we tasted defeat in region play. Sox, curveball, going to miss a little bit high, but he's got a wicked one, 2-0. And he'll throw it at any count. Facing Earl, who came out to play center field for them. 
Little looper over to McMillan at third. Tosses to Murgo for out number one. Two outs to go. Got like that third base. McMillan got the ball pretty quick, and he took his time, set his feet, got a good grip on the ball. He knew he had time to throw the guy out, so good play. Made a wonderful play right there. Two outs to go for the Bearcats. Now nice solid game tonight by BC, Mike. Absolutely. All the way around. It's what we like to see. Setting up a big showdown Friday at Dreary at Memorial Stadium, 7-15. First pitch. We'll name our player of the game after this. Hopefully we get two more outs and end this one. Pitch on the way to Bivens. Pinch hitting right here. Called strike there, 0-1. Sox working fast. Another curveball. Said he just missed on that one. Evens it up. One and one. Must have been a little bit inside on that one, yeah. That was just the 10th pitch by Brogan Sox. Laces out to right field. Hayden Thomas coming in. Tracks it down. And he'll snatch it out of the air for out number two. One to go for BC here. We'll get the win. Five in a row set down by Sox since he came in. 8-2 ball game. And all five of them been in the field. He hasn't struck anybody out, Mike. Matter of fact, Caleb. been four fly outs and a ground ball. Caleb Gibson, the leadoff man. Got two hits tonight, a single and a double. Then Swing and a miss. Evens it up, two and two. One strike to go for Brogan Sox. How nice would it be for to give him his first strikeout as the last out of the game? I would say off speed, but he's struggling with it. I'd probably try a fastball right here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, first and second. Sox delivers. Yep, fastball. And going to foul that one away down the right field line. Hook and foul. Yeah, give Coach Jefferson credit on that call. Like his curveball is a little bit, you know, a little bit off tonight. So maybe go with the fastball. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Sox looking for his first strikeout. Pumps and fires. Tagged him. Oh, foul Over ball. to third and foul ball. McMillan had it red. Count will stay two and two. Now stick around for our game day turf management player of the game. Kurt will be making that call, and we'll give you a rundown of the final stats in our post-game show. You don't want to miss it. Brought to you by game day turf management. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Sox looks in, gets the side from Marshall. Shakes the runner from the stretch. Hit him. Curve ball. Up, oh, hit him. No, he leaned into it. Did he? Yep. yep. They're going to make him come back. It'll be a yep. ball. 3-2 count. He leaned into it. Sure did. And they needed base runners, but they're not going to let that happen. Should make it 3-2, and two, I believe. Yeah, it'll make it 3-2. and two. Looking out and talking with the umpire right here. You know, they have that, they do that a lot in college when guys don't move or lean. Yeah, into yeah, it. You, you definitely see that a lot in college baseball. Eight to two ball game. Mike Higgins, Kurt Peachy here with the BC looking for the final out. Rogan Sox. We're seeing the umpire try to let everybody know what's going on. A little bit of confusion as this game's coming to a close, hopefully. Ty Marshall will come out and kind of get what the count is. I don't know what. Before that pinch, it was 2-2. Two, two. And he leaned into it. You would think it would be ball three, right? Am I missing something? And they'll have a conference towards the mound right here and try to sort things out. But if he leaned into it, so the umpire will stick his fingers up and we'll figure out what the call is. Yeah, just throw the fastball. Just need one more strike to end this game and give BC an 8-2 victory. Looks <laughs> in. Three balls, two strikes. Sox from the stretch on the way. Got Outside, it. strikeout to end the game. Andrew doesn't like that call. Eight to two, your final. 
Stick around for our totals and highlights, and we'll name our game day turf player of the game. That is all coming up in just a moment. Bearcat baseball right here on the Dove 1620. Hi, folks. Kurt PC, PC class of 82, and owner of Creekside Restaurant located at 711 East Main Street, Lexington, in the Old Mill. We offer a full breakfast and lunch menu, plus daily lunch specials, including pot roast on Tuesdays and Thursdays now. We are open Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. We also offer takeout and multiple delivery services for your convenience. Remember, breakfast, lunch, or brunch, the choice is yours. Sandy Run Exterminating is a family-owned and operated company serving Columbia, Lexington, Gaston, Newberry, Orangeburg, Aiken, Lugoff, Camden, and anywhere in between. Being a family-owned company, they go the extra mile to give you the best service around. Call them today at 803-794-3208 to schedule your free termite inspection. Sandy Run Exterminating can help solve all your pest control problems, termite inspection, treatments and treatment contracts, damage repair, pest control, new construction pre-treatments, CL100 letters, and moisture control. Give them a call at 803-794-3208. At Simply Southern Realty, we know that buying a home or selling a home is one of the biggest and most exciting decisions a person can make. We aim to make the process as simple as possible. Our team of local experts here at Simply Southern Realty is ready to guide you through the home buying and selling process. We are committed to fast, professional, and courteous service to help you understand and feel at ease throughout the process. Our trained and licensed agents at Simply Southern Realty specialize in the greater Lexington and Columbia area real estate market and are prepared to help you every step of the way. Please be sure to visit us at our website, simplysouthernrealtysc.com. It features the most in-depth information on local homes, neighborhoods, and schools. We are dedicated to providing you with the resources you need when researching the greater Lexington and Columbia real estate market. Please feel free to call us at Simply Southern with any questions at 803-399-8363. We're located at 528 Columbia Avenue in Lexington. Simply Southern Realty. Stay tuned as we name our Game Day Turf Player of the Game. Game Day Turf Management is a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Like their name implies, Game Day Turf Management takes pride in developing high-quality game day ready turf. Keeping that turf in top condition over the long term requires timely and appropriate maintenance and care. Game Day Turf Management can customize a maintenance program to fit your field. Providing complete facility management or working in conjunction with your existing staff. With over 20 years of experience in athletic field services, Game Day Turf Management is your full service provider for your sports fields. They started with natural grass fields and have grown into a leading service provider specializing in synthetic turf. Game Day Turf Management is happy to meet on your turf. Give them a call today at 803 446 5341. That's 803 446 5341. 41 Game Day Turf Management, a proud sponsor of BC High School Baseball. Tonight's game is presented by Simply Southern Realty. To find out more, visit simplysouthernrealtysc.com. Now with tonight's final stats at our game day turf player of the game, here's Mike Higgins and Kurt Pesci. And welcome back to Brooklyn KC High School. Bearcats with an impressive win tonight. 8-2 to two over the 8th ranked Drear Blue Devils. Looking at the final totals here for BC. It went 9 of 27 from the plate. Four walks, four strikeouts. And for the Bearcats, again, nine hits. Uh, hit by pitch, we had Staten and McMillan. And we had stolen bases by Marshall and Etheridge and had a couple of errors out in the field as well. But Hayden Thomas, the numbers on him tonight, five innings pitch, gave up four hits, two runs. That one run was earned, two walks with an impressive eight strikeouts. And Brogan Sox does it again, two innings pitched, no hits, no runs, no earned runs. Uh, one walk and one strikeout, and the Bearcats are going to win this one eight to two. Kurt, and want to get your player of the game tonight, and also your final thoughts. Well, I tell you what, we showed up. We know what we had to do. Um, we made them use what four pitchers. Yeah, and you know, only one of them was successful for about two innings, but that was it. Um, impressed. I mean, you know, 